That's why cats are criminals. Anyway, we're live. Cats are yes, criminals. And, the, cats, cats and that are was the essay criminals. proving the cats are, in fact, criminals. That, that was well put, Andy. Yeah. Thank yeah, you for putting that talk. Right? Extremely. Extremely. Yeah. Honestly, I'm just, happy, in, to, uh, I'm just oh. happy you all got on an hour early to hear the entire thing, right? Because I worked really I hard. know, I know. It's... Uh, you were yeah, very I'm just, excited I'm just sad about everybody it. else missed it. Right? It's really too bad. We should really start recording these things earlier. Honestly, yeah. what, I, what I could do is uh, if anybody in the chat wants to hear my hour long TED talk about why cats are criminals, uh, if you Venmo me 1999, I can actually just send that to you. Oh, there you go. Please don't. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you're just going to record an infomercial. Thinking about it. All right. <laughs> if somebody Venmo me 1999, I'll send back something, but uh, it is not going to be that because I don't have that. <laughs> it's like, there's nothing here. <laughs> Cats are criminals. What's your evidence? Have you ever interacted with one? Have you met a cat? Have you met a cat ever? Have you met a cat? Welcome back. We're live. Has oh. anybody ever truly met a cat anyway? I, I haven't. I don't think I've truly met a cat. No. Not been truly. in a cat's presence. Not truly. No. Definitely been in their presence. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Cats and lizards don't like me. Like inherently, really, I lizards? Just, yeah, lizards don't like me. I, my hands are very, my hands are cold. Uh, so yeah. I got cold hands, so they're just like, what's what's the point of you, mammal, <laughs> if your hands are not providing me uh, warmth? True. I feel like that's a very cat thing as well. Yeah, I don't know, like, Della. We're gonna let you meet Nancy, and I will be shocked. I've met Nancy before. You have. I have. She liked you. Did she? I don't remember. She had to have. She likes everyone. I think she did. I think I actually, I think I actually did. Cats sometimes like me because I think I actually managed to, on that trip, interact with Sid. Ooh. Like. Wait, are, there, are there multiple? Oh, never mind. Sorry. I was, still, I was thinking about lizards still, not cats. So I was like, wait, are <laughs> no, there multiple no. lizards? <laughs> I, I want to hear about to all own, the lizards. The I did used to bloom, own like... a lizard. I had a, I had a, I had a little leopard gecko named Tork in. Uh, I remember that. I was nice. about to say, like, when you started talking about lizards, I was like, but, but you had one, Della. I did. I did have a lizard. My mother was like, I will not be taking care of that lizard while you're in Ireland. So I had to give him away to somebody else. I just need to see a cat lizard like Jeff Goldblum hybrid. That's just a dragon. That or, is or true. Jeff, Damn it, you're right. Or, or, or Jeff Goldbroom, uh, who was, you know, he merged with the, the cleaning supplies. Is, Jeff Goldbroom. Goldbroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's let's get into it, shall we? So we got some heisting to do uh, with our phenomenal heisting. Who are we stealing who from the heisting? Sorry. We're just what? in a graveyard. We're just <laughs> hanging out. I didn't sign that grave robbing, really not heisting. This is absolutely, that's like a heist. I, yeah. I, I, not, one that, I didn't bring a crowbar. I'm not the one that I, brought a crowbar. We're not. Oh no! I, I, I brought a crowbar. There's plenty. There's there's people that are keeping watch of this place. It sounds like a heist to me. I just don't know what I'm heisting yet. We're not <laughs> robbing any graves. We signed in. They know we're here. <laughs> you do have. You're right. A lot of paperwork right. that got you here. Uh, Absolutely, absolutely. Brindle agrees. We are not heisting <laughs> anything here. Got if, Brindle, if Brindle happens to find something on the ground that was maybe stuck and had to be pried free with his crowbar, then you know that's just would, if, if, if you're the gonna, trust, gonna, gonna support it. Yeah, you know, nine times out of ten, crowbars aren't used for 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 crime. They they're perfectly legitimate uses. I I just brought it because one of those uses might come up. Whatever they are. They're used for barring crows, right? Is that what you do? Yeah. You just like hold it up and they like they hiss and flail away like uh, vampires. Be gone! <laughs> <laughs> like a holy symbol you can just wield to turn crows. That's a good idea. Um, I'm gonna save that for later. But anyway, <laughs> write that down. Write that down. <laughs> let's let's introduce our heisting crew who's heisting for charity. These are some advantage points that they have uh, in the tank, and of course they could always get some more. From donations. Let's move forward. So. Oh, the speed music here. Look at that music. Hey. 
let's uh let's let the big faces introduce themselves shall we let's go with bedlam hello <clears throat> i am bedlam uh i am playing Fernando fallow tonight uh as always here <laughs> And uh, uh, so yeah, he's he's just this half elf farmer, you know, making his way in this uh, this crazy world of Waterdeep, um, trying to trying to pay his rent. And actually, that's pretty easy now. We we've done pretty well. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's uh, let's find out what happens uh, in uh, in the city of the dead tonight with Brindle Fallow. Heck yeah! And Della, what are we doing in the city of the dead? Oh, uh, in the City of the Dead tonight, we are joining uh, Volo, who is the author of uh, several books on adventuring and dungeoneering, uh, on a, an expedition to look at the architecture of the land of the of the uh, the City of the Dead, uh, and to have ourselves a little poke around. And um, uh, he's writing a chapter on uh, spells and architecture in dungeoneering. Oh, I'm B. By the way, I'm a uh, grad student at the Magical University and a TA, and I'm pretty sure my boss is up to some shit. Uh, and I'm going to find out what it is, and I don't know what I'm going to do about it, because I'm a third level wizard and he's an archmage. So, you know, but I'm going to find out. Heck yeah. Speaking of finding out stuff, what's uh, what's Riv up to in all this? Oh, wrong button. That was an ominous transition. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not worried about it. You've been doing all. enough fucking around. Yeah, it's time yeah. to find out, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm playing Riv. Riv is having a normal time. Riv is just finding as many members as can become a part of their polycule. And then they're going to have a B team available for us whenever we need to heist. So it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. We're going to find out if we can seduce a ghost. Heck yeah. And of course, last but certainly not least, Julia. So I hope Riv remembered to bring the pottery wheel because Lavinia did not. Lavinia did not bring a pottery wheel to this uh, cemetery excursion. Uh, all Lavinia brought with her are her wits. And I don't know if they're going to be enough because she's hearing some whispers on the wind and she's feeling some some intense feelings that I don't think belong to her. So we're going to we're going to see where that leads her. Heck yeah. I guess I'll introduce myself to you. Hello, I'm Andrew. I'm running the game. Um, I don't know. I got a loose kind of compilation of some notes, and something should happen tonight. It should be very interesting. But this has been a lot of fun so far, and it should be more fun. I forgot one key player in all this. Good old Volo. Get him up on the screen. <laughs> Presents and accounted for. You know, everyone's favorite. That's a uh, different picture that you've used for Volo. Why is there fire behind him? Because Volo's I a mean, passionate individual. Huh. Also, I am sure he, I'm sure that man has set some fires. I, I <laughs> he has set at least as many as he's put out, if not more. <laughs> Volo a fire to my heart. <laughs> there it is. Let's uh let's recap. All right. We left, last left our heroes. They were uh, doing some research with Volo in the City of the Dead, uh, looking at magical abjuration, warding, and masonry, which turns out B is kind of the subject matter expert locally. And as they were going through, they also had some strange encounters as they were walking through the uh, Hall of Heroes. And that encounter was this just odd, bittersweet nostalgia and longing sensation swept over Lavinia, and a sprinkle or splash of that seemed to hit Grindel as well. They were pulled north of the cemetery, at least not physically, but just with some strange little string of desire to go see more. But with that, come back to my characters. I'm actually pulling up a map of the City of the Dead, too. We come back to our characters, leaving the Hall of Heroes in the darkened and 
slightly misdotted landscape of the City of the Dead. Well kept grass, mausoleums kind of dotting the horizon. Some of them with a little bit of light from ever burning torches or some other type of source of illumination, maybe candles. But outside of the occasional passing of a guard, a little shadow in the background, it is quiet here. Honestly, it's the quietest place in Waterdeep. And for city dwellers, even Brindle has only been here for a little while. Like, it's a stark difference. Even back in the boarding house, you can hear carts and arguing, and you can hear parties down the street. This is just serene, tranquil, or eerie, depending on how you feel about the quiet. Going through everyone's heads as you're starting to move north. I believe Volo. Somebody said, oh, there might be a ghost up there, and Volo kind of took the lead and said, let's go take a look. What's going through people's heads? I think I think uh, for Brendel, this is pretty unnerving. Uh, the hustle and the bustle of the city has been continuous for months uh, since getting here. Um, and the just complete lack of uh, of sound here. Um, is uh it's enough to rattle him it's enough to distract him from uh maybe keeping an eye out for for things that could be crowbarred things that could be uh you know <laughs> take it long um so usually he's paying pretty close attention to the guards and where they are but but it's instead very distracted by the uh the ominousness and, and extreme quiet of this place in the in the in the pole the pole of longing toward the north I like that what about riv Riv is wanting to think that they are just going with the flow. You know, this was not necessarily an excursion that they have had any particular stake in. Uh, this is more one that they have found themselves wrapped up in. And they're not entirely convinced there is a ghost, but they're also not sure what they would do if they met a ghost. Mm. And they're realizing they're probably not particularly prepared for anything that could go on here this night. But they're sure it's fine. There's nothing to worry about. They have other things that they need to worry about. Yeah, Rune's juggling a lot of problems right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about B? As a uh... Assume your quote unquote research partner at this point, right? Um, with Volo and Silas. Silas kind of interested in finding out what's more, but seems to be teetering on the edge of curiosity and concern. Volo has just charged north and is like, let's go. I love me some adventure. I think the quiet is profoundly unnerving for B. Uh, B does not like uh, the uh, this this quiet. Does not enjoy uh, the, uh, the how quiet it is. Very much likes noise. I, I guess my question for you is: It are there still like nature sounds? Like, can I hear like squirrels, rats, like bugs? Ben, roll perception. Ooh. Can I have advantage on this one? Because, like, I grew up in sort of nature. I'll give you advantage for your familiar. Sweet. I do have a familiar. Mm -hmm. Just kind of flying around a little bit, checking things out. Okay. This is a perception. Oh, why don't I get perception? I don't have proficiency in perception. I should. Um... Wizards are good at investigation, not so much perception. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Uh let's see, that's 19, and that is 16, so 19. Okay. The normal nighttime ambiance of critters and noise, now that you've kind of 
tuned into it, it's still there. This is not a complete moment, a moment where you've walked into the woods and everything has gone silent. But the just standard like background din of noise that you're used to um, is gone. That said, on that 19, you do sense like we talked about it last time that strange, uh, uncategorized celestial correction, uh, divine magic. Mm-hmm. Um, I you think... can start to zero in on that location. Yes, I would like I would like to be doing that. I would also. I think B's impulse is to stick close to Volo, I think partially because he's the source of sound um, and partially because he knows a lot more than what I than I do here. And B has an inclination to trust the expert. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but can I take a moment to should I, should I roll something to zero in on this? No, uh, so what this means is as you're going, as you're trying to figure out more stuff, you have basically holds to try and lock yourself in. OK, uh, we're going to play kind of a. More accurate, hot and cold as you go. OK, so am I getting uh, am I as I follow Volo towards this ghost? Am I getting, am I, you sense am I getting the presence hotter? getting greater. <laughs> you're getting hot. No, no, damn it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not uh, sorry. Let's see, 27 minutes in. It's actually pretty good for us. There we go. Um, uh, so the, the, the sensation is getting stronger as I follow Volo. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Lavinia, what's going through your head? Because you got a lot of things you're juggling with this place. Yeah. So, um, is my is my fan? Am I still having phantom limb, or has oh, that? Uh... Oh yeah. Okay. Big time. Uh, well, she doesn't love that. Um, and it actually uh, it makes her a little bit more like angry than anything else because okay. she feels like she's being toyed with. Uh, and she doesn't like that shit. Uh, she doesn't like being toyed with or condescended to or that kind of thing. So this very deliberate uh, phantom limb feeling that is being imposed upon her by this uh, sensation is just just making her mad at this point. So she's probably like not passing Volo, uh, as they walk towards this thing, but she's probably like right on his heels to get to see what is what is causing this. They move him with a purpose to try and figure out these shenanigans. Yeah, and she's probably just like repeatedly just like rolling that little bit, the little bit of a limb that was left, the little section and the shoulder blade, just like repeatedly just rolling it back and forward at this point against yeah. the sensation. B, one of the things you notice on that 19 perception as you start getting a little closer is that, like, you've been in here for maybe an hour, right? You came in, you went to the you know, Hall of Heroes, you spent some time. Volo went on a very, very long monologue about all the different heroes that were displayed there and the statues and, uh, and their little um, and their graves. It's actually been a minute since you've seen one of the guards around. Not that frequent, but, you know, you just one you saw one maybe 45 minutes ago, uh, kind of like crest over a hill and disappear. But like, seems like it's just you guys. Hello. Hmm? Yes. I haven't seen a guard in a little while. Oh, they're probably busy attending to whatever matters they have to attend to here. I mean, they have to work too, right? Yeah, but they've been on kind of a rotation, and I would have thought that we'd be passing one. 
soon. Hmm. He does stop at that and like kind of takes a look around. I might that just be is paranoid. Odd. Uh, yeah, I might I might just be paranoid, but I thought better say it out loud to you, you two, Scotch. Uh we should probably keep an eye out. Oh, good instincts. Let's Yeah, we'll keep that in mind for certain. B like has like at this point like also just a little bit rattled by all of this like has her like sling out like the little like uh it's like a little wrist mounted doodad like uh and it's just like uh, I'm not thrilled I don't love uh, this I don't love I don't love this uh Oh, well, actually, I think I think it's right on the edge. I think that it's right on the edge of like, oh, this is exciting. Like, oh, this is like a cool adventure. Like, oh, I get to have my little like little thing out. And there's a part of her that's like, oh, this could be like real bad. <laughs> like if this goes bad, it could go like real bad. And I've had a lot of real bad <laughs> recently. <laughs> I'm just feeling like the burden of potential consequence. Man, look, if it's gone real bad, you've had a lot of real bad recently, your luck is bound to change. <laughs> that yeah. the bruise on your rib from when you fell out of the ceiling just like throbs. Uh, from like literally two days ago. Yeah. Um as you So well, well Brindle Brindle would have noticed this conversation, right? Uh, oh, yeah. he's like, oh, oh yeah. There are no, you're right, the guards <laughs> haven't come by, you know, uh, so, 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 so is looking going around, to give you just, a look with a so, capital I mean, Brent Brindle didn't say that out loud, he okay. didn't, he didn't say that out loud, this is more like Fair. an internal, like, oh, 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 you're right, um, now, now, clearly distracted by the oppression and quiet of this place, it, 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 you know, took him away from his, his actual, uh, his actual purpose, um, <laughs> One of many, I'm sure. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, and and so he just looks around. Is there is there really is there anything around here? You know, in this in this normally guarded area that uh, that might be of interest to to one such as Brindle. One of the things the you farmer. see as you have been kind of slowly walking north on this path, and if you want to pull up the map, you can actually follow this route that I'm looking oh, I'm, at. I, I'm looking at it. Yeah. yeah. So starting from the you know kind of bottom right corner, or you know southeast corner depending on how you orient um from the hall of heroes you kind of generally traveled center north and right now you're passing a uh large tomb with a fountain outside and i think lavinia is familiar with this one uh it's a, it depicts a basically fight between multiple uh water deep watch um water deep watch personnel and Orcs, hobgoblins, and drow. And the fountain actually has um, water coming out of these areas where, like, guard personnel have stabbed into these foes. Mm -hmm. And this is the Warriors' Monument from the Silver Marshes campaign. Oh. Uh, but you can see beyond there, there's a small mausoleum with a rather large uh, iron door. That is theoretically keeping it sealed shut. But I mean, uh, looking, warriors tend to be buried in their finest attire. Looking, uh, looking at this map, um, what do I see across the street, across the little path here from from the warriors' monument? Because I see, I see the name of this, and and that piques my interest. Merchants' uh, rest. <laughs> the merchants' we... rest. You say. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at for the map? It's the interactive one in the. I will. I will post it. One in, second. In Albert Rodeo. No, no, this is in oh. the this is the Waterdeep interactive map. Uh, I threw in the Discord for you guys. Oh, actually, it, cool. it's probably there already. Uh... Oh yeah. You don't need it, but if it's, you want it's there. It, we we do have a section called Map Waterdeep, oh. and the link is in there. I'm good at stuff. There it is. 
City of the Dead is on the right or east side of the city. And you guys are all central to oh, City of the Dead at the moment. So, um, yeah, the Merchant's Rest is uh, so, basically a kind of upper class cemetery area. It's the series of small tombs and mausoleums kind of like built together in a very like ornamental way. Uh, with a couple of like little walking paths and outside areas as well that you could like look at, but this is for people who, well, actually, got to roll me some history. Okay. Ooh, history. Yeah. Uh, I believe I do not have anything that would uh boost that stat. No, I don't. So fourteen. I mean, you've heard people talk about this up at the Grocers Guild, right? It's kind of out of that price range, but it's for you know, pretty well off, basically high class merchants and like not quite lords or anybody, but those who have the affluence to buy plots and actually have a named place for their burial. Uh, it's a, mm. it's considered a pretty nice status symbol to be able to afford a plot here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you're saying uh, you're saying that maybe that that warrior's monument looked a little a little fancier, a little flashier, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and of the two, merchants tend to liquidate their assets and pass them on to people. Warriors tend to be buried in their like finest battle attire with their weapons and shields. Like usually quite nice, at least master work, uh, if not magical themselves. I have I have a follow up question to all of these questions. Sure. <laughs> uh, does does this this pull that uh, Lavinia is feeling, does it seem to be headed towards that mausoleum, or are we, is it still beyond this point? It can, it's still... It's further north of you. And B, you feel the same thing, that energy pulse you felt getting a, a little closer at this point. It's almost starting to weigh a little heavy in your stomach. Interesting. It... It, so due north of us, there are sort of two Yeah. I am interested in sort of continuing to move north then um kind of with uh with Lavinia try to follow this vibe does it feel more like it's coming from uh that huh sort of looking at all these monuments it could potentially be who seems the most ghostly hmm. well as they're as they're Continuing forward, Brindle might just kind of take a quick hop over toward the Warrior's Monument. Just see if he can, like, is it locked? Is it? Red is test... following Brindle. You get to test the door. <laughs> uh, it is a uh, very, very well made, as I said, iron door. And uh, try to twist the outside knob or give it a bit of a shove. It does not budge. And I want to do that a little surreptitiously. I don't want to, you know, let Lavinia and uh, and uh, and B hear the rattling of a door back there. I'm not like, you know, uh, <laughs> shaking it or anything like that. Ah, oh, it's but, a but push just... door. God damn it! I've been pulling yeah. that the whole time. <laughs> no, all right, uh, all right. yeah, you test it. It does feel locked to you. Uh, you feel like with the right tools you could open this. Uh, you also feel like that would not be a quick or surreptitious thing. I think uh, I think Brindle Brindle gives Riv a look, just kind of like a. Should we? I I do kind of like to imagine that Brindle has been so focused on this that he didn't notice that Riv is like, oh, okay. standing directly behind him <laughs> until he like turns to look and they're just there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but but still, uh, 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 other than the momentary surprise, and then and then also the like. All right, yeah. Um, <laughs> then it's like, a, uh, I don't know, like, should we? 
Uh, how far how far ahead are Lavinia and B getting? They're still relatively close at this point. I'm uh, sorry. I don't know anyone in Massachusetts. <laughs> um. So I'd, I would try to maybe uh see how quickly I could uh I could open this thing up. I will tell you right now, Lavinia is not paying attention to if anyone is following. So you're on your own, kids. <laughs> Okay, it oh, seems like this seems fine. Lavinia and Volo potentially be No. Uh I think B I think B like glances back, sort of sees your together and is like, they're grown. They'll figure they're fine. <laughs> they're so, making their own adult choices. <laughs> Lavinia, B, Volo, and Silas all kind of continue north. Um Brenda, what do you want to do to get this thing open? I believe I have some proper tools for the situation on me. Um, so I, I would like to use uh, my thieves tools to unlock the door. Okay. Uh, you looked at this lock. You, re uh, you realize that it's pretty well made. Uh, this one's going to be a DC 25 lockpick check. Ooh. Ooh. That is pretty well made. It's almost like they've got something in here worth taking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Where is my... Can't be that worth it, or it would have magic locks, too. It, mm, well, we don't know, well, but it does, doesn't. He didn't, say, he didn't cast Detect Magic. I, don't I was going to say, that I is... I Detect Magic up this whole time. <laughs> yeah, but, but did you tell Brindle? There. But did sure. you tell did you, Brindle? Did you, did you look at the locks? <laughs> no, why would, I look at the, why would I look at the locks? Yeah, why would you? I'm sure they're functioning perfectly. So. They're working so was, uh, as intended. Uh, hey, do me a so favor. Make, so, make a perception check. Uh, Brindo, real quick, before you do this. Oh, can do. Sure. Uh-oh. Well, that was a <laughs> that was a <laughs> Good to go. Let's, let's do this. It's not just me. <laughs> the curse is passed on. Uh, does, I should not have rolled that 18 earlier well. just to test it out. Oh, no. Um, yep, carrying on, because clearly there's no problem here. Um, is this sleight of hand? Is that what lockpicking comes under? Or... Yes. But I'm also going to give Brindo okay. a... Uh, Perception check, because Riv is there with you. Give you a fighting chance. <laughs> That's ten. Ten? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not going to give you any other context. Uh, and the rest of you, basically anybody that's not Brindle or Riv, uh, can't comment because you're not seeing this. Um, hey, Riv, you see, like, uh, just a tiny glint of what looks like some fishing wire or string um, attached to this, this uh, side of this mausoleum, uh, with look, which is tied around something that looks like a small, like, uh, silver bell. <laughs> that means something to you. If if Riv doesn't say anything, Brindle will just oh, keep, no, keep Riv, doing the oh, okay. Riv absolutely <laughs> would say something. Uh they would just be like that. Hmm. Brindle, there is what well, looks like some fishing line. I think it might be attached to a bell. Oh. Oh. Okay. And that line is not Steps attached away. to the door. It's just nearby. Okay. So there's about probably a foot of wire, and it just kind of like wraps around this bell and like has no attachment point anywhere else. Hmm. Maybe that's just meant to dissuade us. Maybe it's just a bell for when birds land, you know, to scare them off. Uh, Maybe it's where to land someone off. is buried and wasn't actually dead possible maybe it's yeah there we go uh Brindle, if you'd like to roll history maybe it's you're a, welcome to maybe it's a ghost bell that's actually a 19 on history uh <laughs> you remember seeing the same type of setup all those different um different quality materials but a string and a bell in that alleyway where you found that entrance into the sewers oh yeah i do remember that Oh yeah. Um so yeah, uh Brent will relay that to Rib. So a uh, Rib, was it isn't this isn't that the same thing we saw in that alleyway when we wait, 
did we all go there we all went there eventually yeah when mm-hmm. we followed the uh that the whole group uh that, that went underground uh from the from the docks you know um that uh that had like i forget likely stolen stuff from the warehouse i is that who they were yeah it's the group that tried to rob Rainier. uh live and rainier the that's muggers right. that's right but they were also the they were also the muggers that that you know uh Brindle saw obviously trying to rob the warehouse. Oh, that's true. Yes, correct. (laughs) Correct. According to the police report. Still still sticking to my story here. Uh, uh, So, um, you know, impressive, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, let's see here. Uh, Oh, okay. Well, that's that's neat. Do you think this could be a secret entrance for for the group? Uh, Like, does this connect to the the sewers? Do the sewers go underneath here? Oh, now I, I really don't want know to know about geography, but I think <laughs> we should go. find out. Uh, I, think we should open this, I think we should open this door and uh, yeah, and, and see see what there is, and we can let the others know afterwards. You know, give me a slight of hand check, please. Ah, uh, not we gonna make it twenty five. Do you at the time what that thing was? Do you remember? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the bell not. thing? Uh, yeah. No. It been, was, like, stopping hard as hell without I know. I was it. sitting here just like, come on, guys. <laughs> come on. One of you's got to remember. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, something along the lines of. Was it was it actually a trap for their entrance? I can't remember. It's not a trap. Brindle certainly I can't doesn't. tell you. He already made the roll. You can tell him now. Huh? <laughs> he already made the roll of the lockpick. You can tell him now. Oh, oh OK. Uh, it's a silent alarm. Oh yeah. Well, then what's the bell there for? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's part of um, the components. <laughs> it's a spell component. That's fine. Like, like either either I pick the lock and I get get into them, or I set off the alarm and they come to us. Either way, it's you fine, set off the right? alarm regardless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the door yeah. is open, but the alarm is still set. <laughs> you you fiddle with this lock, and uh, Oop, that was not a rule. To the best of your ability, like you can't get this open, right? You you feel like if you had more time. And like really sat down to work on this, you could, but like at a certain point, you're gonna lose the group and they're gonna start asking questions, and it's just not feasible right now. Uh Riv, you do see that that bell kind of like twitch back and forth a bit and then stop. Yeah. It makes no well, noise. I can I Riv, I can't, I can't, I can't get this thing open. <laughs> Brindle, we are going to have to sit you down and make sure you practice lock picking. Well, I thought I was pretty good at this, actually. Uh, all right, you're right, you're right. Uh, really well just not, just not good enough yet for this, uh, for this caliber of lock. So, you're right. I'm gonna have to find a good thing to, to practice on. Maybe I'll come back here later. Uh, anyway, maybe not so. practicing on this, but yes, once you have practiced. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to try? No, I think we have spent far too long away from the others. You hear? You hear? Yeah, you're up. probably right. Hey, hurry up, guys! All right, stop making uh, out. Right. Let's go. Brindle <laughs> <laughs> quickly like wrap like rolls up the toolkit and like puts it back into his uh in, into his uh coat and uh and then kind of rushes off toward uh toward the others. <laughs> Um, assuming nothing else happens due to this bell. <laughs> if the two of you are looking for a place to spend a little bit of quality time in the dark, I have a few recommendations, but I think that'll wait till later. <laughs> oh, Vola. I would like those notes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we'll talk about this. So. Independent study. Those, I wouldn't mind seeing those notes myself. How do you feel about bibliographic erotica? Uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, say more. We'll talk. Please include me in that. <laughs> do you do you do you publish under your your normal name or your pen or do you have an additional pen name for that? Oh, now what would Bolo's pen name for that be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it? What's it, what's it supposed to be? What's your stripper name? It's like your pet's name and the street, the childhood street you grew up on. So yeah. Like... It's Volo Thamp Gurdam is his full name. It would be something ridiculous. So yeah, what's, what's his pet's, what's like his pet, like it's like your pet name and uh, the name of your first pet. And mine, mine was 
always I always thought mine was pretty good, but it's Sam Diamondback. <laughs> which like that's a pretty good like male stripper name, I think. Can be my next. I don't know how you guessed my pen me. name in the first guess. That's insane. <laughs> is that is that uh, is that the pen name? That's now Volo's pen name. That's the Sam pen one until we get a better one. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, Sam Diamondback. Oh, and I got to put that in my notes so that it's canon forever. Speaking of uh, <laughs> Lavinia taking notes, hey, go ahead and make a perception check. I kind of envision you breaking out to the front of the group as Volo has stopped for this very strange chat. Um, the perception, uh, 17. Uh, you see up ahead. Oh, I closed that tab, did I? No, I didn't close it. It's just hidden behind another tab. Yeah, there we go. You see past the warrior's monuments, uh, there's a mausoleum kind of centered north. And it draws your attention because while the rest of these mausoleums, some of them have like little lights on the outside, this one you seem to see like a flicker of light coming from the inside of it. Which mausoleum? From the Warriors Monument, it's almost due north. So would this be the the Brandeth? Brandeth Mausoleum. Brandeth Mausoleum. Is it... Does it look like a normal colored flame? Or is it a more unusual shade of fire? Got the yellow-orange hue of, like, maybe candles or a torch. And we've uncovered... We've run into in a couple places in the City of the Dead already. There's, like, a... What are they called? The always burning... the. You've seen the ever burning torches uh, lighting up a couple of these monuments, but some are like glowing like softly for you know dark and ambiance. Um, but this one seems like it's lit inside, which that's new. The ones uh-huh. in uh, the city of uh, the Hall of Heroes, sorry, those lit up when you went inside. They were not previously burning. So this would indicate that either that's like an actual like normal fire, or there is somebody else up there i have detect magic on can i determine if the fire is in fact magical in nature or am i gonna have to get closer to it the range on that i think it's line of sight i think it's just uh, it's might got, be 60 feet it does have a range uh 30 feet okay so i'll have to get closer to it yeah you can definitely detect if it's magic or not but you have to get a little closer uh, i'll call 30 feet on the map from that tomb south, that bend in the intersection where like the three roads kind of converge. That's about 30 feet. Hashtag okay. not to scale. Yeah. Because that's definitely not to scale, but close enough. Yeah. This is the Brandeth Mausoleum. This is this where I'm also getting that pulse of uh of uh uh celestial not not celestial, but um divine energy. Divine energy, celestial or and or infernal energy. Yeah, this is something that you've kind of felt adjacent to before. Uh, usually when there's like high-powered magical experiments happening at the Blackstaff Academy, there's kind of a strange uh, after effect where it's almost the equivalent of coming out of like doing solid work right in a paper for 12 hours straight and then like realizing realities around you as you're like, oh yeah, right, I'm, I exist and there are other things. Uh, it kind of amplifies that almost a little bit of distortion. Can I'm gonna can... I'm gonna point this out to Volo and and Lavinia. Oh. This. Yeah. Hello, is this? Magical distortion. Divine origins. Ooh. Some something, the a sort of a pressure on reality. Are you? Are either of you picking up on this? I'm feeling something. I was gonna say, can is there a history role I can make to a religion role or something to know like what the Brandeth 
family is like about in water deep as far as this one is uh, dc20 uh as and Volo sits there and says like oh it could could he said very DC well 20 yeah could very well denote um some type of very powerful clerical warding it's fascinating to see. Would you like to burn an advantage point? Yeah, because I got a 19, and that feels rude. We have a plus two in history. No, that was worse. A, that was only a 12. You have a 19, and you need a 20? Yeah. Okay. I'll give that to you on the burn advantage point, because you're pretty close. The rest of you all kind of catch up and you're having this conversation. Bolo is talking about, you know, divine boards, which he's he's halfway right on this one, B, because there's as you look around, there's a lot of like uh necromancy and abjuration around here. There's you know, gentle repose, all those kind of spells that tend to be over these kind of graveyards, um, sanctuary, that kind of stuff. Those aren't powerful enough. To make this kind of a mission, mm -hmm. but there are very powerful divine warding magics that you uh, are aware of. That maybe that could be it, but this is some like black staff is doing experiments. Stay, stay clear of area for the week. Magic. Yeah, uh, this is this is very much. If this is a ward. A ward is doing this, and I'm getting divine magic off of it. Then this is a ward cast by. This is either a ward created by a demigod, or a ward created by a wizard so powerful they might as well be. Can you get Odvar to take a look at it? Uh. I can ask. I actually don't know if he can get in here. Of course I can get into these most holy and protected places. There he is. <laughs> what did I miss? Do you feel that? <laughs> mm, yes. Feels like home. But not quite. A little, a little off. Often like a not like a here. But also not like mm, the planes that typically occupy the ventral position hmm. in a, sort of a standard cos cosmology. Well put. I think as you beings would say, it's it's the equivalent of biting into a chocolatey cookie and having it be oatmeal. Still good, but not oatmeal not... raisin though, because that's not Oatmeal raisin is a tragedy. Yes, that's true. Real talk, oatmeal raisin is my husband's favorite cookie. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 oatmeal raisin is literally the best cookie. I don't know what you guys are talking I about. I like oatmeal cookies, but I just don't like raisins. <laughs> it's the problem. Raisins are great. They just exactly remind well. me of eating old people. Um, I will. This is I nature's will. candy. There's <laughs> nature's candy. <laughs> Adver says, uh, in a way, person. it's comforting, just not in the way one would expect. Okay, okay, okay. I feel better about this now, because I'm sitting here like, okay, it's like divine in origin, but divine covers a pretty dramatic territory. Uh, uh, Want to go poke it with a stick? This divine is not bad, but it's not necessarily benevolent either. Oh, no, absolutely. But there's, there's... Uh, there's not necessarily benevolent, and then there's actively malevolent. Mm, yes, not and that. It, 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 you're not getting actively malevolent off of it? No, but I don't believe we poke the right thing with the stick, as you said. Stick. Mm. Uh, Lavinia, on that history <laughs> roll, the Brandath family uh, was a very, very small noble family in Waterdeep. They didn't really make any like waves or do anything that impressive until their eldest daughter 
Lady Alitha, uh, Alitha, sorry, granddad. Married Daigle Neverember. Oh, oh, so this is, that's Rainier's mother. Uh, Lavinia just, like, stares at it for a minute, and then she, like, glances at Riv, glances back at the mausoleum. Uh, what your your boy one of your boyfriend yeah, Rainier's Rainier's mother is probably buried there if she's not buried with well actually I don't know I don't know if she would have been buried in the Never Embers plot or there but. Lavinia, we need to get better at communication because you looking at a mausoleum and then looking at me and then looking at a mausoleum was concerning. I would never put you in another person's mausoleum. That would be disrespectful to the family when they found you later. I thought it made perfect sense. This conversation took a really sharp left turn. I'm going to go look at it, but sneaky. Okay. Yeah, I think sneaky is probably the best bet. And I think by by that, what what she means is she's going to get within that th like 30 feet range, like just sort of outside like the line of light from the door uh, and send her familiar a sparrowing, a sparrowing over. Um, Provided that once I get close enough for detect magic to look at it, I don't see something like the familiar passing through will cause a fucking blade wall to spring up or something like that. Oh, good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> blade. I've played, in, game. I played in campaigns with you before. It's so great to kill familiars in 5e because they just come back. There's no penalty. I know. It's a little bit uh, like looking at it from a jamming perspective, it's a little sad. Yeah, sure. Bad. Um, give me a stealth check, anybody who's getting within 30 feet of this mausoleum. Okie dokie. Yeah, why not? Uh, ooh. ooh. We're doing good. That's a 22. 23. 21. Also 23. Hey! <laughs> we're a sneaky pack of bitches! <laughs> give me one second. Just roll that real quick. Hey, we should put together a heist team or something. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like we're good at this or something. We got 21, 23. What was the lowest roll? 21, 21 was, was the lowest, lowest. roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, you move up stealthily. Um, Silas is going to hang back a little bit. He's not a stealther. <laughs> uh, Volo, Volo for a second just straight disappears and <laughs> um you see you see him be kind of like moving with you but i think like a 24 so yeah oh, nice not because it's, it's just a hell of a good roll that was a 19 um, i also rolled a 19 that's why <laughs> yeah and the five of you just kind of creep up towards this thing Advar, i'm not gonna have him roll stealth he just kind of <laughs> hitter patters along with you you know, you know, in the really old like '60s Scooby Doo cartoons when Scooby was sneaking, and there's just like that da -da 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 noise, that yeah. sound effect, the, the tiptoe like, noise. Yep. That's that's the sound Advar makes when he. But only Lavinia can hear it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know that. She thinks the rest of you are hearing it too, <laughs> so she hasn't brought it up. Silent as the grave. Wrong accent, wrong wrong character. Moving on. <laughs> what do you, what what was that odd part? I don't I don't yeah. I don't want to know what the right character is. Oh, that's definitely a Starian. Silent oh. as the grave. And I'll do his <laughs> no. voice well. Uh moving on. So <clears throat> you get all get very, very close to this mausoleum, and at this point you start to see a little more of what's going on there. B, there is magic. In this mausoleum, there is uh, some type of 
um, abjuration surrounding it, it is mm -hmm. currently not active. You can see the remains of it uh, around, and it will probably spring back up in the future. Is the, the vibe I'm getting from that abjuration magic, am, it, am I getting like ward? Am I getting like a pat, like a, this will activate if somebody passes through it? I mean, Arcana check. Do -do. Merp. My worst roll of the game is still a 13. Your instincts say some type of ward that's currently been disabled, but it's not been like disenchanted or um, dispelled. Okay. You know the difference. Like the magic doesn't usually linger that long. If it's dispelled, this is something that was probably temporarily turned off. Okay. Uh, but I'm getting the vibe that uh, turned off. If we cross over it, it is unlikely to activate. And what now, can I you also know from your experience in the Black Staff Academy that certain words are keyed to things, such as like the key card from the heist, right? Where the person with those keys can interact with the wards and there's no problem, and people without them could have problems. So that could be a setup. It could also be, hey, if it's off, it's off. That's hard to tell at this point. At this point. Uh, just because it's down to who cast it and who decided to key it to what. So the rest of you, as you kind of get a little closer, you see, sure enough, there is there are lights on inside. They look like candles or torches with the way they're flickering. And you can see the silhouette of somebody walking around inside. I'm going to try something real quick. Okay. B is going to take a tiny box out of her pocket. And in that box is a live cricket. <laughs> a little okay. cricket. And she's going to sort of cup it in her hand and she's going to gently toss it over the ward. Over, over top of that abjuration circle to see what happens. Oop. It just lands. Keep the life crossing past it. So, I oh, know it, it just it lands fine. It lands fine. That's that's what she's saying. Yeah. She said the ward's not keyed to like life Sorry, crossing I heard, over it. I heard keen. I was like, no, no, no. The cricket's fine. <laughs> cricket's fine. Yeah, keyed. It's not keyed to set off to when something living um, passes over it. So you're saying only if something dead crosses over it? Very realistic I, possibility in a place like this. That's from Bolo. Uh, yeah, maybe. Or I think it might be just turned off. Like, I think somebody, whoever's in there, turned it off. It would be a brilliant safe house place for safe house for zombies. Safe yeah, house. Think about it. You know, now that I think about it, maybe this would be the worst place for it. Is a... No, what a phenomenal idea, right? I think that I'm going to send Chumley in to see if uh, see what he can see. Are we assuming whoever's in there is there for bad intentions and not just like bad intentions paying respects? or good intentions? The amount of power coming off of them is such that I don't want to surprise them either. Lavinia, speaking of that power, you can feel that bittersweet nostalgia pulling you still in that direction. Somebody's Brind fucking mourning in there. Brindle, you also are feeling that as well. Again, it's still a little muted or like distant, but uh, it's little sprinklings of loss kind of wash over you. And Riv and I are not getting any of that, right? Not to the same extent. You feel it a little bit now that you're closer. Um, but the way especially the Lavinia has described it as way more potent. Okay. I mean, Brindle's very curious about this. Um, and, and, you know, wants to continue going closer. And, uh, but, uh, but if the, the sparrow's going to go in, right? 
Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to wait and see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send the sparrow in, just kind of like pop, hop, like hopping around the outside of the door. Okay, you're gonna work out and kind of look yeah. inside. Give me a perception check. Yes. As you're doing that, Brindle, you hear kind of a soft whisper. Um, you thought, think for a second it, it it came from like one of your friends, but it's got some. It's got a weird way of talking, and you pretty clock it pretty immediately. I just hear. Courier, I wish to be whole again. And if you would insist me in this endeavor, I will continue to help you find the riches you deserve. <laughs> Is Brindle just sitting there shaking his head like <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, Brindle <laughs> is, um, because uh, I, I I thought I solved this problem. I I, I put this this stone away into a, a bag of holding and didn't think that it could uh, talk with me. As that kind of thought process kicks off, you realize that like those aren't your feelings. You're feeling like that's coming from the stone. Stone wants in. Uh, oh man. Uh, well, I'm not going to stop going in to find out what's going on here, but I am definitely a little apprehensive about what might happen. I mean, the stone is put away into a sort of, you know, a safe place. It's not even like in this dimension right now, right? Like it's, that's, that's quite the reach uh, for it to, to be talking to me right now. Um, mm -hmm. I hope so in this dimension. I think Brindle checks the bag. <laughs> Real quick, it's like open it's the still bag, hole, right? Like yeah, it's still it's, there. It's, okay, it wants, it wants its eyes. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, still want to go inside though. Um, okay. although apprehensive about how this is going to affect the stone and why, and even in, in, and I think at this point, like Brindle's still not sure. Like, should he be helping it? Should he not be helping? He probably shouldn't be helping it. You haven't probably told anybody should not anything, be. so we can't help you make that decision. <laughs> yep, I'm just sitting there shaking my head, checking a bag. <laughs> so, what did you get? Sixteen. Thank you. Um, person inside has like a familiar gait or move or silhouette to you. Uh you said sixteen. Mm-hmm. It looks like your dueling buddy Rainier. It's oh I think B is going to sort of stand up uh, and um, is actually going to like step forward. Okay. Rainier? Uh, you have to get a little closer. So as you're as you're looking at, it, you're still about thirty feet back, and in, in, in there inside of a mausoleum. Yeah, I think B will B will straight up just sort of walk forward, getting real cautious over the thing, and then kind of like, uh, hello, Rainier. There is a like clatter as you hear just um something metallic drop, and you see like one of those. Uh, the the light kind of shifts a bit as it it looks like uh, something was knocked over, and you hear a uh, hello. Uh, hi. Oh, hey, uh, B. Uh, what are you, what are you doing here? Uh... Oh, shit, and he like sets back up a candle that he knocked over and goes to, like pick up what you see now is like a small tin with like some incense in it. Uh, sorry to sorry to interrupt. We were just doing a a a, a thing with uh, the university. Uh, oh, yeah, with uh, with Volo and 
we we saw this open and we got all uh we got we 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 just sort of saw the light and we had kind of come over but we're we don't mean to we don't mean to interrupt we just wanted you to know that there was also other people here and not like you know uh I don't think nice. Brindle would have shown himself uh, still in stealth, uh, just so you know. <laughs> she did not because... say, she said we, and mm. the only person she named was Volo. And Volo would comically, like, poke his head in the doorway, like, above yours and be like, ah, hello, my good friend, my good friend. And I just, I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to, like, surprise you or, or, like, upset you if you, like, heard people out here or anything like that, because oh. I know how good you are. With a sword, and I don't need to get stabbed by accident today. <laughs> uh, no, I I appreciate that. The um, hello, good to see you uh, as always. No, th thank you. Uh, you you are welcome in. Would you like to meet some of my family? Um, honestly, the company's nice. I mean, if it's okay with you, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, if you're, if you're mourning, I don't want to interrupt. No, I just wanted to, it's, it's a long story, but, um, this may sound, have you seen, have you seen Riv? I have. <laughs> And I was going to say, I feel like that's the moment like, that Riv kind of materializes out of the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're here too. Lavinia just like just leans over and she's just like, remember the bar? Hey, yeah. We talked Lavinia. about this. Lavinia, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Had, we had dinner together, of course. How how are... Okay, so you're all here. Great. Uh, yeah, again, again, we, we did not mean to come in here and, like, interrupt your private moment. I really just wanted to be, to, to sort of let you know that there's just other people here. And B, right now, is trying as hard as she can. It's, I don't know if it's gonna work, but to psychically <laughs> compel Brindle to skulk and learn information <laughs> outside... Uh, Brindle, go ahead and roll insight. <laughs> it's like, I, mean, uh, just, I mean, Brindle wasn't going to show himself yet anyway, but, actually, but uh, yeah, let me let me roll insight on this. I'm going to call that a DC 15 insight check. <laughs> we didn't want you to think that there might be... Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that looks like a, that's a two. Uh, no. Let's see here. Do I have any anything for insight? Oh, oh hey, five. five. He's giving you the all clear signal. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Do without what you will. Um, um she's like <laughs> now. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think Brenda one one way or the other would have been like quite ready to to jump out yet. Um, because this is a little weird. Like, uh, what with um suddenly Rainier here and a bunch of people and some sort of incense burning and a mausoleum and a. <laughs> in a guarded ghost city but without the guards nearby it's a little odd it's a little odd um but so now, i don't think he's he's coming out quite yet now, now that we're in here what's that what's that divine nostalgia vibe which who what god did your family exclusively worship let's take a look at your weird little shrine you, you uh you come in and you realize that like it's Actually, not coming from in here. I'm from below you. Oh. Uh, and you know, Rainier like kind of goes into like give Riv a hug, and then kind of stops and is like goes to give Riv a handshake, and just stops and is like, we we um, can. Would would you like a hug, Rainier? Uh, it it looks like it's been a long night. It high five, yes. <laughs> oh. uh, a crisp Ra high five. Rainier kind of kind of nods and says, "I I didn't want to presume. I, honestly, after the dinner the other night, I just felt things were a little. Yes, I'd like a hug." And Riv gives 
him a, a warm embrace and even lightly brushes their fingers <laughs> against the back of his neck and just quietly says, I know we need to talk about this and I am sorry. Not for the fact, not for what we will talk about, but for the fact that we need to have a conversation and that I did not talk with you about where things stand. But everything about their demeanor is warm. It is not brushing him off in the slightest. Okay. He kind of nods at that appreciatively. And, um, you kids. Lavinia <laughs> is just like very pointedly not looking at anyone. She's like, this is weird. What if we kissed in your family's mausoleum? No! Come on. <laughs> not with not with us here. This is just turning into a My Chemical Romance album. Um Riv does sorry, Rainier kind of says, um Well, honestly. kind of funny because the whole reason i'm here is actually my dog just kicked in my door <laughs> she sure did hello With such aggression that's hey. what that's hello, what nancy baby. aspires to being able to do were you not getting enough attention what a baby um honestly you're kind of the whole reason i'm here right uh not not in a in a bad way but i took your advice and i i locked up that necklace and music has changed, but I didn't change it. So that's my hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way too excitable. Um, and I just, well, at that point, I just, I felt like I kind of had to come visit, you know. Um, it's the first time I've taken that necklace off since my mom passed. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is an odd, odd reunion, but um... <laughs> I'm glad you took you. those precautions. I, I imagine that was difficult, but I am glad you did that. How's uh? Thank you. How's um? How are you all doing? It's been um, a chaotic couple of days since opening night, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it's been, it's been pretty, it's been pretty wild, um, but, you know, mostly in that, like, hmm, there's just been a lot of life happening, um, yeah, there's a lot of you, that. would you, would you mind terribly, I'm, I'm sorry, this is me being, like, a weirdo obsessive. Um, but I don't get to the, the this isn't how my culture like does like uh, 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 burials and, and death stuff or, uh, uh, of, of any any type. Would you mind terribly if I took some measurements in in your family's mausoleum? He actually smiles uh, and like honestly, that's that's perfectly fine. Um. Yeah, I thought I thought coming here by myself would actually I don't know, do this is nice. Well, I I I'd love to hear if if you're if you're willing if would could you um I know you 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 and your mom seem like you were you were very very close. Um can you can you tell us about her? Like what was what was she like? Wonderful person. And he starts like kind of walking you around this mausoleum. It's actually pretty big. Uh the Brenda family mausoleum uh looks like it was kind of expanded uh from its original design. Most people probably wouldn't be able to tell immediately. B, I think you can see like where some of the, the original tomb was and then like how it grew over time, probably from becoming a more notable noble family with you know more resources, right? But yeah, I'm like taking I'm like as as he's talking, I'm like doing little sketches. I've got like my little flat pencil behind my ear, and I'm like, uh, like t doing little little sketches and like 
noticing stuff and occasionally like pointing out like, oh, that's where like the old, like the old abjurative wards would have hung in the old chapel. Uh, like just occasionally like making that note and stuff like that. Um, Volo's off to the side looking at like a very expensive look, uh, like bust of a family member. And it's like, oh dear man, this must have cost a fortune. <laughs> You know, I was like holding it up and looking at the light, and it's like, hmm, it's heavy too. It must be real. And <laughs> puts it back down. Uh, uh. And it's like, ah, that's uh, that is actually a, that's my great grandfather. If you could uh, just be careful with that, um, it is very real and that's very expensive. Is so, there just don't put not. it back centered so it's not too close to the edge. Yeah, thank you. So I think not not too far into the conversation. I think I think Brindle would have given it a little bit once everybody else went inside and once nothing was kind of like obviously happening. And uh, I and assuming I don't hear anything else outside. Well perception. Yeah. I was gonna come inside. Ooh. Uh perception, perception, perception. Sixteen. Okay. Um uh, Brindle, you see something. That is oh. kind of alarming. Um, <laughs> you see a, a guard has started to like make his way across the path nearby. Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, he's got a little lantern and is kind of looking around. And there's a strange blur of movement that you don't fully track. Uh, and this guard just collapses face down on the ground. Lantern kind of like bounces twice and then goes out, leaving the guard kind of gone in this pool of shadow. Brindle does not move. Brindle does not go <laughs> to check on the guard. <laughs> Brindle stays stays tucked away, uh, uh, out of sight, uh, and. That was him. <laughs> waits to see if if anything else happens from from this does the guard keep moving does no. this blur do anything else is there any sound like what else is it just <laughs> dead silence after this blur comes out of nowhere and just knocks Accurate. this guard down and then then it's just they're just laying there on the ground uh in the dark. what if it's dead that silence. bitch again Ooh. what if it's that Ooh. fucking bitch again <laughs> Um, what if it's the other bitch? If there's two uh, bitches. As, I thought the other bitch is dead. As you no, said, greasy bitch is still there, and and sexy bitch is still there. I was give, worried about your names. I was, so I was worried about the greasy bitch because sexy bitch is out there in the streets. They have names. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't remember their names. That's that's a that's not, it's Riv's job to keep track of their polycule. I'm not. <laughs> They're not, they can't out. Greasy bitch people. is not part of the polycule. Greasy bitch is not part of the polycule. I was, we we haven't. That's not going to happen. It's sexy bitch though. Maybe. Maybe. Um. No, Brindle, you watch this for a moment. Like, there's like a silhouette on the ground where like the guard has met the shadows that just does not move for like a full two minutes as they're inside, and you can hear Volo being like. This must have been incredibly expensive, you know? Uh, and you're just like, what the fuck just happened? I think... Uh, oh, what would Brindle do? Would Brindle just go check it out by himself? Or would he actually go and notify... No, I think he'd go and notify people. Because <laughs> uh, that, that was pretty weird. <laughs> I, think he'll, I think he'll head over and start inching toward... The door toward the, in the the entrance of the mausoleum. Okay, I need uh, Lavinia to roll me a d4. Uh, with Riv as one, B is two, Lavinia is three, and Volo is four. Actually, we'll do a d6. Uh, okay. Rainier is five, and Oddvar is six. Not Oddvar. <laughs> Sorry, that's Oddvar. Fair enough. Um, don't attack. <laughs> 
Actually, no, please attack Oddbar. Oddbar has the best odds of all of us. For <laughs> just, Oddbar like, would just straight up disappear. That's absorbing true. Absorbing it and not having a problem. Um, you see Silas is still kind of lingering outside. Brindle, you, you see him more because he's just kind of like watching this, but hasn't like committed to being inside yet. Oh, yeah, I um, forgot Silas was here. <laughs> yeah, he's just taking notes and looking at things, but he doesn't feel like having a midnight hangout in a mausoleum. It's just weird to him at this moment. Um, oh, like he's never he's too good for having had a goth phase as a kid. Come on. I, I think I think I think Brindle might. Uh, I think Brindle might try to. I was you a know, varsity get... fencing athlete. Thank you very much. Silas inside. Oh, <laughs> You're trying to get to see his scum where it's safe, Silas. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I, I feel like Brindle would it, like. If if Silas is basically right there, and then and Brindle's like, oh right, you're here. Uh and sort of just try to like nudge him without saying anything toward oh. the and kind of point toward the you know, toward the mausoleum, like like yeah. it's time to go inside. Yeah, they like, all they all went inside already. And it's, Brindle just kind of kind of <laughs> pushes him a little bit toward the toward the door, like uh, oh, come along. Oh, oh, okay, I guess um, <laughs> he's kind of shoved inside. Um, what do you, what do you do? What do you say? As like, the rest uh, of you see I'll, like Silas kind of like stumble awkwardly across the threshold and like give like a little wave and then like try to collect his papers that he's like been writing on and like Brindle kind of come in behind him. Yep. 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 And then, uh, uh, if there's a door, we'll shut the door. Um, <laughs> why are you closing us in here? Yeah, that's okay. Us. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe not. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> Something just something out there just took one of the guards down. Uh, so I don't know what it was, but it was fast and it was like a blur. And uh, there's a guard down outside. I haven't investigated yet. Do you think it was a greasy bitch? It could I, be a werewolf. I, was I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 what, could the, be a werewolf. Do they the guy the who blurs? attacked our landlady, the greasy bitch? Yeah. Oh, is that who we're talking about? Yes. The, uh, De- Del Delmar Del Delacar Delacar, thank you. Not Delmar. Delmarva is, is, is <laughs> yeah. the Delmarva the Valley. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. it makes you feel better, in there it could be in the realm of possibility, but you just, Delacar moved fast. This was probably supernaturally fast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think I don't I don't think it was I don't think it was Delacar. Um this was very fast. This was so fast I could not I couldn't see it. Um um, something's out there birdie eye i'm gonna send birdie eyes out to go do some birdie eyes spying as you're getting ready to work back into your hawk um i think lavinia yep. and riv both you would see this Oddbar uh standing there just goes well, that's odd and begins to like actually float off floor um like someone's picking him up <laughs> And then you realize that's not what's happening at all. There's a tile that's being pushed up beneath him. Oh, no. Uh, Oddbar, did you, st- did, did it click when you, st- hmm? did it click when you stepped on that? I heard no such sound. Rainier, is, is there that just normal? just somebody underneath it? Like, like, <laughs> opening oh, no. it up to look around? Uh, and we're going to take a break in a second, but what you no! see is, is exactly that. As the tile begins to rise up from the floor, you see a set of hands pushing one of these tiles uh, to enter into the mausoleum. We'll take a five-minute break. Uh, that's maybe <laughs> ten for funsies to build the suspense. Awesome. As a and tiny badger person, I feel compelled to start gnawing on their wrists. <laughs> just immediately get in there. As you list. should, just, absolutely. You know, I, as, these as a, instincts kick in as a small woodland I, badger creature, and just I just gotta bite it. If I see that, I just got I gotta bite it. Just gotta do it. Just gotta bite it. I'm not. I, I'm probably not going to do that. I am a wizard. I have an image to maintain, but I love it. Well, we'll see if the battery instinct kicks in for break. We'll be right back. <laughs> you need me to repeat that? <laughs> yeah. What were you saying? When you said 
See, like Lavinia already is not like the biggest fan of Rainier. He 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 has a vibe, and she doesn't fuck with it. But also, He's like a sad when boy. he. But when he was talking about the fact that like this was the original part of the mausoleum and then it expanded, it's like, oh, so who, whose graves did you disturb to to expand your family's plot? Why does it always have to be, you know, somebody else? I mean, good poor people. No, the poor uh, people. Let's, uh, so let's, let's talk let's about graveyard that. management for a second here. Here we go. Uh, because do you have do you have things to say well it's 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 just that it's just that there is always a limited amount of space yes that's why you catacomb that's why you just keep going down and down and and down down. that's why you have catacombs that's why you have mausoleums because after a while like no one almost no one is ever buried in like an actual proper like eight foot coffin right like especially i mean especially these days but even back then almost never that shit's expensive takes up real estate little boxes maybe a skull. <laughs> they only move the headstones oh my god <laughs> the logistics of this like the moral logistics of this yeah, down in the I, catacomb ground i mean that's but catchy. also, probably they did only move the headstones because there probably wasn't a whole hell of a lot left down there. Like, that's I mean, true. what are they burying poor people in? Pine? How long you reckon that's going to last underground? That's true. They don't really embalm in this uh, in this setting, do they? I'll bet they boil. Mm. So, so I bet they, they, they have a magic. ceremony. I don't know. Uh, they could. I mean, okay, you, yeah. Okay, but if they're using magic, then those people are too wealthy to have their graves disturbed to make a mausoleum bigger. Well, okay, I mean, personally, yeah, I'm, I'm except, getting that lich except insurance. The decay, you know, except the so. decay. Uh, oh gosh, where is it? <laughs> decay is a necromancy cantrip. Sky burial, hell yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, real quick. <laughs> While you all are pondering that, I'm just going to orient you to this map over here. Oh, yeah, sure. Or am I wrong? I might be wrong. So what you have are obviously the main the main group up here. Lavinia, Riv, D, Rhaenyra, Advar. She just hollered from existence. Uh, My baby. Decompose. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry. Volo. And then, of course, Brindle and Silas joining the uh, party after a moment, right? And Advar having that aisle start to just Float up and those hands pushing them up. Um, the tile is kind of moved to the side gently, and all of you see um, a rather amusing sight. Lavinia. Mm hmm. Is it someone I recognize? You recognize this gentleman. Oh, no. (laughs) Wait, suddenly they're in the midst of everything. Mm -hmm. So Sue is coming up through the grate. Oh, it's that guy. You. Which one? Plague mask, dude. Plague mask, uh, plague doctor. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this a surprise. And I'm just going to move. I'm not going to do anything too crazy with this, but I'm going to put the <laughs> PG friend. Two of them quickly uh, realizing that as they move this stone that there are people inside, quickly just scramble out and pull out weapons. And then look around and seem honestly shocked that you're here. Sup, fuckstick? <laughs> you wanna not do whatever the fuck it is you're thinking of doing? The guy that played Dr. Mask looks at all of you and goes, Well, this adds a complication to things for sure. And looks at Rainier and goes, looks like we meet again.
Della, you look stealth. Obviously, Della, you look confused. This is the guy. This is the guy who tried to jump him. Yeah. I know who this is. I'm not confused. Yeah, that that time you're where you were, to, you were following you're behind ready. Riv and yeah. as a yeah. friend. <laughs> no. the first instance of stalking. Yeah, yeah, friendship stalking. <laughs> friendship uh-huh. stalking. And yeah, I know who this is. I'm just. You, I'm just, I'm impressed at the balls on this. In, uh, on this gentleman, that's what that and face I'm about was. To, and I'm about to show them to him. Well, not probably. That, B's, B's ready to get in a fight. Dang. God, I'm ready to fight somebody. I'm so bad at fighting and I'm so ready uh, to fight somebody. I think Doctor kind of tilts his mask back and like brings something very quickly Mm-mm. and says, I'll handle this. And the other one with him just nods and vanishes. Well, that was that was a surprise when they climbed out. Yeah, but that's... he's within five feet of me. Can I interrupt that? A surprise round allows him to move and take an action. So oh, now, fucker. Please roll initiative. Oh, yeah. So, theoretically, they could have actually attacked, but that seemed not the vibe. Mm. Uh, so, Lavinia, what do you got? Uh, 16. Okay. Rendell? Uh, it is just Dex, right? I always, mm-hmm. I always mess this up. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 17. Okay. Oh. 19. Hey, damn, y'all are rolling good. All right. Riv? 7. seven. <laughs> there it is. There's the one. It is. <laughs> All right. Wow. And then... Uh, oh, wow. What did Oddbar get? Oddbar rolled a 7, too. <laughs> and then I do need to bring the token back, actually, to get him on the initiative. Oh. Well, he is. All right. One last thing. Didn't start. Okay. In front of you, the guy that played Dr. Mass just downs this potion and then splits into four. But hmm. Volo is going to go first. Uh, Volo is just like, gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm sure we can talk this out and come. What also what amazing spellcraft, phenomenal use of the arcana. I'm sure we can come to some type of arrangement or possible and then is going to inspire B uh take a D8 for your next uh attack or saving throw. Um some sort of arrangement or would you like to be in a book actually? I'm writing one right now. And he's going to actually try to use one of his abilities to Get them to not fight him. And the play doctor goes, hmm. Well, you can live. You're not on the list. The rest of you, sorry. Ah. Well, Okay, you're not the kind of person they write stories about anyway. Um, I was going to vicious mock him. And then he takes a little bit of damage. Hurts him. Already. He's going to move back, too, because Volo is not a crazy fighter. 
B. You feel inspired? And there I are do four dig play doctors in front of you and uh, another somebody missing. I do feel inspired. I feel so inspired to use my one of my newer spells, which is see invisibility, you fuck. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I can see I can see invisibility now. I'm not gonna use my cheaters see invisibility. I'm gonna use the regular type. But what is the material component? It's talc and, and a little pinch of powdered silver. Easy peasy, you. like. All right. Go ahead and make an opposed uh it's gonna be a perception versus hide or stealth. Uh okay. DC is seven seventeen. Because I'm actively looking, is this investigation or is this in, uh, perception? This is perception. Just because investigation is like, I'm going to Sherlock this shit and actually do some fingerprints and all that other stuff. It was worth a shot. Uh, but unfortunately for me, that's a nine. Okay. Mm. Uh, you can sense that he's still in the mausoleum. Um, but has managed to duck somewhere that you can't quite see. Uh, maybe it's the angle. Maybe just he ducked around a corner. But uh, you know he's still in here with you. Okay. Cool. Um, that's I think my action. Um, is there anything else I can do? Um, I'm gonna. I think I'm going to. Is each of these squares five feet? Ah, uh, there's a. We love this in tracker. But they ah, are pretty close, wonderful. Actually. I did the uh, the gridless one, so it's a little easier to maneuver. Nice. I'm gonna back the fuck up over here because this guy's doing magic shit, and I want to be. Where's that ruler? Gone. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not far enough away, but I just want to be a little bit farther back. Um, at least stay out of like melee attack range. Doesn't make you a priority, and that's good. Uh, the plate doctor is going to move, and is actually going to. No, he's smart enough. He's going to go after Lavinia first. <laughs> Rude. Um. Your AC. Uh, currently, thirteen. Yeah. Okay. I uh have not gotten to trigger. He uh, my mage armor yet. <laughs> he moves in. All four of them moving in is very disorienting, and all four of them just slash at you with these small knives. Uh, and you do feel a uh cut make contact for three points of. Slashing damage. Okay. Um. When that happens, I need you to make a Constitution save throw, please. Oh. Okay. This is a DC. Uh, that fifteen. My con is not terrible. That should be. Uh, that's an 18 on the die, 1920 total. All right. When you're cut for a second, you start to feel your limbs like start to seize and lock up, uh, but it doesn't hold. Uh, I will comment on the possibility of a poisoned blade <laughs> out loud. <laughs> uh, so that the others are aware and on guard for the possibility of this fuckery. Okay. Uh, and then he's going to around and move he's going to disengage again he kind of slashes at you very quickly and then proceeds to uh roll out of your way behind the column and move up towards this little back panel area they're here to steal. 
Brindle. Yeah, what the heck? Where are they going? Just... Um, I want to go after them. How far away is that? Can I make it that far? How do I? How do we do that measure thing? Uh, it's the little triangle. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, little triangle. Little triangle. Where's One, two, the little triangle? Three, four, fifth icon down in the toolbar. You can also hit M for measure. Oh gosh, yeah, I'll need to do that. It's reloading the page. Uh, so um, we can get, um, from where you are, they are 35, 20, 55 feet. So you can use a double move boom, to get up in the grill if you wanted to. Oh, there it is. Okay, finally loaded it again. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't see how much you measured, but if I can get right up in their grill, I will be doing that. Um, they are no longer near. It'll be anybody moving else, your, uh, right? You have cunning action, right? I do. Yes. Yeah. So you can um, you can move and then bonus action dash and still have your action. Oh, I thought the cunning action had to come at the end. I didn't realize it could go in the middle. You can do uh, action, bonus action, and movement in any order you want, and you can even break up things like movement. Ah, yeah, I would have wanted to. Uh able to also disengage but they're not anywhere near uh anyone else right now so so if i come uh from uh dashing up from behind i'm probably going to give myself away i won't be able to do a sneak attack right yes but if you're within five feet of an ally you can still sneak attack um that's not gonna help you for this one but people can right that's what i mean for for this one i i won't be able to do that okay uh is there anything better that i can do Ah, hold on. One action. Okay, all right. This is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> I am. I'm going to cast disguise self on myself. Okay. Um, and a uh, and appear to be that plague docker friend who was just here moments ago. Hell yeah. Who just disappeared. Uh, you're out of line of sight, so do it. So I do that. Um, that just takes one action, and then I will use my movement and dash to uh, join the group from behind. Whoop. Now I'm just following along. I'm just with them. And I look like that guy who was here previously. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> just casual you come rushing, that's it. that'll set that'll set me up for later uh rushing through the crowd um everyone else you, you see the uh play doctor friend just come running through the area um he looks at you and he's like what are you doing grab the stuff and get out of here i got this yeah, i am yeah <laughs> Going the wrong way. No, no, this was the plan. <laughs> he like this size and goes, Oh my god. Yeah, we're we're heading there now. He like starts looking to the right, like or to the, yeah, his right. Oh, over there? Yeah. Okay. So I so I just go ahead of the group a, a little bit and to the right. I go up here. All right, I will start to do that. I don't think I can move that far. No. Yeah, he's, be next round. He's trying to point you this way. Oh. Oh, <laughs> he's right. Oh, over there? I, I'm obviously stalling. I, I'm hoping that this will use up enough time such that other people will be able to act. Slovenia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I see, I see that happen. Uh, roll, uh, roll insight was, on that one. Yeah, I was gonna say, can I roll an insight to see if I can see like where he's gesturing? Uh, okay. Uh, that is. Uh, my insight is a plus three. That's a twenty-one. Uh, you, yeah, you get, you know, this is an odd thing that's happening right now, but for some reason, the plate doctor is like. So, uh, looking up here at this 
at this uh, place of honor uh, casket. Is this, is there a name that says exactly who's in there? Is this like the first Brandath? Is this Lady Rainier's mom? Brandath. Oh God, they're here to grave Rob Rainier's mom. That's so fucked up. Oh, that's horrible. I hate that. Um, May her rest be eternal and uninterrupted. Oh, that's so fucked up. Um, well, I don't love that. So I still looking like at them where they're standing. Uh, Lavinia is gonna move like up onto the dais, like still looking at them. Uh, uh I need to make a perception check, please. Yes, that is uh, DC twenty four. Oh, I'm not gonna make that. <laughs> okay. Unless I unless I spend a. Uh spend one of the um advantages you're welcome to does anybody does anybody object go for it uh, okay okay uh shit you said it was 24 perception yeah I just realized it doesn't matter even if I rolled a natural 20. I can't beat that. Okay, I'll refund the point. Yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah, you rush up onto the platform. All right. Uh, then, so I get up here. I don't see anything immediately uh, up here. I'm just getting up here because it looks like they... He might be sending this other person who I don't realize is Brindle <laughs> uh, towards me, which means it, I might end up punching Brindle in the face, but that will be what it is. Uh, so for my actual action, though, um, he was hurt a little bit by what uh, Bolo said to him. He was. Uh, so I think, I think I'll just make it a little worse because with Toll the Dead, because he was uh, injured, that'll be 1d12 of necrotic damage instead of... Okay. Is that a saving throw? Okay. Uh, there is a wisdom save. Wisdom save. Okay. This is plus zero. Okay. Yeah, get fucked. <laughs> get right. absolutely fucked, my Full guy. Damage. My good bitch. Let me make sure I'm actually rolling a d12. Okay. Oh, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. It's only 10 points. Okay. So lucky it wasn't the full. Uh, but then I think that is all I can do. Got it. Uh, I've gotten... Yeah. You see in like time delay, all four of those play docs react to that like icy told the dead grip that they feel as that like Bell chimes midnight when you cast that spell. Okay. Very nice. Uh, let's see. This is going to be the next move, I feel. I heard. I apologize in advance. Do you? No. Pretty low, actually. Uh, Living, you take 10 points of slashing damage. Yeah, little motherfuckers up here. Um, I need you to make another constitution saving throw. And then this is important. I got all this in the chat. I'm looking for a saving throw here. Okay, cool. Thirteen. You're killing me here. You're killing me, Smalls. Yep. Uh, you said con. Yes. DC fifteen, please. 
Oh, that was a 14 on the die for 16 total. Okay. Uh, you are not currently affected. Uh, but you do realize, like, as you're targeting the play doctor with the spell, you just feel like a stab in your side as the uh, plague doctor has play doctor's friend has temporarily revealed himself uh, to attack you mm-hmm. and like twist that knife a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, you don't go down. Oh, it's two. Oh, because there's two brindles. That's why brindle fourteen is not there. <laughs> so don't worry about that one. Like, that's just getting stabbed tonight. Move on this. Renier's going to move up. And Hack draws a long sword. Um, he has on his hip. And he's going to attack twice. The first one. He actually runs up, uh, goes in for an attack, and instead faints and trips the plague doctor, his friend, uh, and then turns around, slashes him while he's on the ground. He says, "How dare you go into the sacred place and try to desecrate it? How dare you threaten the things that I love?" Just like start stabbing him on the ground. <laughs> Less finesse, a uh, little more just anger at this point, uh, and slashes him up pretty decently. <laughs> and he is just like, oh my god, there's... Uh, and I think he's he's pretty mad. Uh, he's going to action surge. <laughs> hey. Yeah. And slashes him even further. Uh, for a just whirlwind of Attacks and as the play, uh, as he tries to get up, like it's a couple times where he tries to roll and like maneuver, and Renee just like kicks him back into the corner and keeps slashing at him. I'm covered in my blood, I'm covered in this man's <laughs> blood. I'm just like, mm. pretty bad. Uh, it's like Pulp Fiction in here. <laughs> that was gonna go. Mm. He's gonna go. He's gonna go home. Yeah. What, what's what's yeah, what's he gonna, gonna do? Go. <laughs> Silas is like, what the fuck? This is not what I signed up for. Um. I believe in you, champ. Oh no, Silas! Don't turn around and run away because there's a silver blur out there killing things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh. I don't know Silas's spell list. <laughs> I'm sure he's told me. We've had, but have had you deep listened? conversations about this, B. There's no way that's true. <laughs> there is no way that we've had that conversation. I This guy probably treats his spell list like he treats his study notes. Like he can't leave them, let somebody else have them. That's actually probably very true. Um, all right, Stella, I need you to roll a d20, uh, either for 1 to 10 or 11 to 20. Okay. That's a three. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think Silas is familiar with me? Oh, Silas is familiar? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Would it be Silas like a- is, is Silas a full elf or a half elf? Uh, Silas, I believe, is a half elf. A half elf? Mm. Hard bark. <laughs> no, Silas is Silas is very classic. Silas absolutely has like an owl or a raven. Uh, familiar. Um, I'm gonna go with a raven. Raven. Uh, because I think um, got tired of the owl being asleep during the day. 
that could not jive with the nocturnal lifestyle. So here's what happens. Uh, they're cool looking. Let's, let's go with this little thing right here. Oh, that's way too cool for Tyler. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> I'm gonna just create a token real quick. It's a bad token. I want this one. Sorry, the other one, the other one was not rendering properly. Um, Riv is next, by the way, just so you all have something to think about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that seems our brand right there. I know what I'm going to do next. I think I do, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are going to be blue. Download. Burb. Burb. Uh, Silas is oh. going to basically have his familiar raven pop into existence. Uh, and it's going to be like, okay, Archibald. Get him. Get him. Uh, and Archibald is going to split into three ravens. <laughs> And fly towards this dude, and they just start surrounding him and pecking at him. Uh, <laughs> as he casts the flock of familiar spell. Sick. Hell yeah. Sick. Um, unfortunately, that's their food form moves, so they don't get an attack, but. Just. Ominously. He didn't he didn't come prepared for combat. Why would he? Yeah, that'd be crazy. No. Uh and Silas is gonna kinda hang back. Um Riv, your move. Those Ravens will attack next turn. Okay. Uh so yeah. I Riv came prepared for combat in the sense that if all else fails, they do have weapons. Um, <laughs> that isn't their go-to, though. They don't like their hands getting dirty, so I think what they're going to do is cast Minor Illusion. Okay. And what they're going to use that for, since, as Rainier pointed out, we are desecrating the family mausoleum is to make the sound of a voice building to a scream. Okay. But the uh, plague doctor and his friend look at each other and then look at Brindle. And there's a moment of confusion as the three as the plate archers like the fuck. Wait a second. Uh <laughs> and I mean and Brindle like you know, looks at the plate doctor and then points over at that other guy. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> okay. And uh I think for a moment that they were all like very alarmed by this, because the other one's like I think we said I think we tripped an alarm. And the and like they just start yelling at each other like, who's what, who's doing who, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Brindle right. also joins in the yelling and <laughs> adds to the confusion. Yeah. Nice. I'm not taking back what I said. Um, <laughs> what else? What else does Brim do? I don't think that they do anything else. Uh, that 
that is the most they're going to offer for this exact moment. Okay. I will one day remember that they are a rogue and not a bard, but they are not trying to throw themselves into the middle of this combat. They're just uh, trying to cause some confusion and set some people's nerves on edge. All right. I'm just bleeding on your boyfriend. Listen, my boyfriend is handling this just <laughs> fine. <laughs> Looks hot, covered in blood. Be fair, good swordman. Uh, Oddvar is going to cast Bless on Lavinia, <laughs> Rainier, and who else has taken an offensive action? Silas is the only one who's technically <laughs> technically uh, Silas is the only one who's taken a defensive action yet. It should and uh, Volo. Oh man. Yeah. He's gonna cast it on uh Lavinia Rainier and Silas cast bless and just like you know goes I shall bolster your fortitude for this crusade. <laughs> <laughs> and cast bless. Makes like cartoon trumpeting sound, this trunk sticking straight out. The little waves come off like in the Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Cutest little crusader. We're all in hyper realistic, and then he's just cartoon. Yeah. He's animated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh you are all now blessed. Oh. Uh Volo is going to inspire Lavinia. Oh. He's going to say. Now, a lot of people say that when the going gets tough, the tough really do get going. And in this particular case, Lavinia, I feel that you are simply just going after it. I mean, after all, the, the continuity, the, the ferocity, the... And then you feel inspired. Uh, he keeps talking. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm bleeding. You know, some, it's one thing to write about adventures, but it's nothing to actually, like catalog an adventure in real time imagine like a epic fight in a grand place lavinia this is the thing that legends are made of thanks i believe in you always remember that thanks uh, but... does volo does does Volo have like a uh, like a dictation magic spell that it, that he uses? So he's just trying to describe all of this in real time, so it's being captured by like written down as fast as possible by some magic thing. So he's just like he's like narrating the whole thing or or uh, commentating or whatever uh, sports casting like the, this this Absolutely. event happening in this mausoleum, so he can he can uh, write about it later and with accuracy. One hundred percent. He's also an eloquence bard, uh, and so his his abilities literally just come from talking. Perfect. Um, but yeah, there's like a little like pen and quill or, you know, quill and parchment, like just recording everything he says. Um, D, you're up. So, Andy, I have mm -hmm. a shenanigans question. I love it. Hit me. I've got two, two questions. So I've got see invisibility up, mm -hmm. right? Now, see invisibility means I can also see ethereal objects like their outline, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Um... How hey, buddy. Does, uh, what do you how, want to do? How does this work with illusion magic? Uh, actually, I... that would not allow you to see through illusions. Okay. Uh, next question. Yes. Psychic spells mm -hmm. and illusion magic that's replicating this man. If I'm attacking his brain directly, there's only one brain. Correct. Is that still going to go get sort of scattered throughout his four guys? Nope. That vicious so, mockery hit him directly, too. So, cool. In that case, I'm going to move 
here to get myself into range of these guys. Uh, and I'm going to cast Mind Spike. Cool. Good spell. All right. Saving so throw? It, it is a wisdom saving throw. Got it. Um, Save less than zero. Yep. That's uh, a solid 10. Oh, yeah. He was going to have to beat a, I think, a 16. Because it's 10 plus proficiency plus spell cast spell modifier. Uh, 8 plus proficiency plus spell spell modifier. 8 plus proficiency plus modifier? Mm, so be still 15, which he fails anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sorry, 13, which he fails anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 14. Cool. 14. Good. But yeah. Go ahead still. and roll damage. Cool. I don't have any D8. Uh, <laughs> so let me roll some dice. Uh, let's roll. Hmm. That is a great spell to cast right now. Yeah. Uh, and that's a 17 points of damage. God damn. Uh, it's 17 points of damage, and on a failed save, I always know his location for the next hour. Yep. Uh, he, again, just clutches his uh, head and, like, reels, and you see, like, just pure disorientation as uh, he is just nailed with this spell uh, and is not doing okay. It also doesn't look like I've done... Oh, no, there's somatic components here. Uh, so, like... Basically, all B does, I think, for this uh, particular spell is this. <laughs> <laughs> is just. Nice. Yeah, and he just starts to get messed up. Okay. Let's go, because I don't have any second level spells left, so I sure do hope that that was enough. I'm going to roll an inside check for this Plague Doctor for Frindle. <laughs> um, Brendo, go ahead and give me a persuasion. That's going to be the DC. Uh, give, it to, yeah. uh, give it to me a disadvantage, actually, because there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on. 11 and 16. So 11 uh, and persuasion. Where's my character sheet? <laughs> 18. All right, this is plus three. That ain't it. Uh, that's a four. That is not it. Yeah. So he turns to you and says, take care of the imposter. All right, and we'll then do. turns and moves. He's not going to disengage because he trusts you. What do you do? Nice. Uh, if you want to, you could take an opportunity attack against him. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely, 100%. That will, that will blow your cover. Oh, oh, you're right, it would. Uh, no, I'm going to... I think I'm going to wait, and uh, then I'm going to surprise attack him, right? Sneak attack, because I will be able to do that, because I'm going to be doing it from an unexpected... I'm essentially hidden, right? Uh, I'll call that hidden or surprise. I'll call that surprise for sure. Yeah. Step um, okay. And he's going to move. He's going to dash... 30 feet back down the hallway uh, and you hear a like clicking noise and then a crossbow is fired down the hallway towards a rib. Um, toward rib. And rib your AC is 13 as well. Okay. Let's make me a constitution saving throw. You take Seven points of piercing damage. That is a 16. Okay. Uh, same thing. Like, this bolt, like, connects into your leg. Uh, and you feel for a second your leg just to start to seize up. And, like, it's not going to work. Uh, and you, like, quickly manage to, like, rip the bolt out before more of the poison actually spreads. Um, you just feel like that crampy. It's almost like your leg is asleep trying to move on that sensation. But you manage to quickly get back in working order. And then he's going to, as a bonus action, dash. 
um, action to fire, and then he's going to movement to run around this corner. And then goes out of line of sight. Well, I don't like that at all, and I wish I'd done the attack of opportunity. I regret all of my actions, or rather inaction. So uh, I want to move up the hallway and go around the corner as well. Uh, I feel that other guy is actually not that big of a, a threat. Um, not with the bird swarm. So with, not with the bird swarm. Yes. All right, so... Is my normal sp I'm, speed's 30, so I can do a normal movement of 30 to get up there, right? Uh, uh, to get to, I guess, just about the corner, right about here. Oh, that's 35. 30. How did he get up there? Oh, uh, I should be able to move about as far as he did, right? Bonus action dash, then he dashed. Dash. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he dash first. I mean, I okay. Can... Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, apparently, I will also have to do that to be able to get up there. Okay. So okay. I will also be dashing. Um, really cool, right? He's up here. I feel like this is going to go poorly for me, though, because this means I will not be able to use that. Uh, what my cunning action to disengage afterwards, right? Right. Uh. I can't just do two actions, can I? No. That's a special okay. thing of like action surge or haste. Which yeah. aerobic haste okay, is okay. horrifying. Uh but it's not there someday. Yet. Someday. Um Yeah, no, I do want to attack him. So I guess I'll do that. Uh, so only like this will still count as a uh, sneak attack, essentially, right? Yes, I'll give you advantage in this one because he is surprised. Uh, yeah, he he believes cool. you are the real one, and the other one is the imposter. Uh, and cool. then like has like turned his back to you and been like, "Hey, I'm gonna like you got this." So he thinks you're protecting yeah. him all the hallway. Cool. I'm surprised that when you try to like, cool, turn cool, around cool, the cool. corner and just say, yeah! <laughs> yes. Although I, I do wish I had done that attack of opportunity, but that's okay. All right. So let's do that. Okay, this is better. Um, you can't sneak attack on an attack of opportunity. Uh, yeah, it, that's why I was waiting. But but then uh, but then you know he he shot a teammate uh, with poison, which I'm not big on. So let's see here. Uh, one uh, I have a short sword and a dagger on me. I'm not really used to rogue attacks. Uh, so using the dagger, I don't get like more than one attack or anything. It's just straight up advantage. Correct. So, uh, right. But both short sword and dagger work for this. Oh, okay. Then I'll use a short sword because that does a little bit more damage. Um, and is that just advantage or is that how does a sneak attack work? So uh, advantage, and if you hit, you're gonna add your sneak attack dice to the attack. Got it. All right. So here's. Is any scenario where you have advantage I... or um, surprise so, gives you sneak attack? So fourteen. And two, so I'll take the 14 from the yeah. advantage. Um, and then... What's your, like, what, plus five, probably? Uh, is that for... Proficiency plus six. Six. Oh, proficiency bonus. Uh, yes, attack bonus plus five. Oh, yeah, you definitely hit. Come up. All right, 1d6 plus three piercing. It's not that great. Uh... Plus the weapon is 1d6. So you should actually do 3d6 plus piercing. Do level 3. Oh. Apparently I need to update that on the sheet then. Okay. Let me add let me add a few of these. There we go. Aw. <laughs> uh that's only six plus three. That's only nine damage. That was a terrible roll. Okay. Uh do me a favor, roll a D20. Uh let me know if you get a six or higher. <laughs> I do not. Oh, that's good. You actually hit him. Yeah. 
Fuck a mirror image. Yeah. Hit the man. Yep. Uh, he was, he's up there, like, fucking around with the casket. Um, and, like, has started to, op- try, started to open it and is like, what are you... And this attack just lands into his side. He manages to, like, turn just enough to catch it uh, on his shoulder instead of, like, in his chest. Uh, but now is like, between the mind spike and the toll of the dead and the vicious mockery, and now just this, this just brutal attack is, like, starting to stagger a bit. And it's like, yes. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> you are so dead. I, I mean, I'm still disguised as friend. I'm like, what? This is the plan. I'm going to stab it's... your eyes out. <laughs> Lavinia. Can I still roll for persuasion? Do you think that'll work? Hell no. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> like, I will no, just the say. True Brindle swindle, the, the true Brindle swindle convince you're his friend while stabbing him. Like, like if I can pull that off, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. He is oh, on okay. to you. I'm no longer disguised. Yeah. Okay. He's still disguised, but he's like, no, nah, that's unless you do like a grab him and like, well, maybe he thinks, maybe he thinks it is his friend. This is just a double cross now. <laughs> oh, ooh, 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 uh, ooh. true. If the friend was not visible, I would buy that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good uh, point. He's put it together. All right. Yeah. I will say it is interesting. I'm looking at the the map through Twitch, and for some reason, whatever you did to cover up the suspicious room isn't working because I can see directly into the suspicious oh, room. Yeah, because you've seen the the master screen. So oh yeah. <laughs> on on your funny. maps, it'd be blurred out, but gotcha. I was, I was like, sharing my I was like what is that doing um, back here? I could. Uh, so I think that was it. A- I could get crazy and open oh. this. A second time as a player and do some no. mapception and I don't know, just it's not. No, your it. explanation is satisfactory. Uh, yeah. So this man, this man on the ground, how I'm pretty confident between the birds and Rainier's blinding rage that he will uh, he will take care of this man on his own. I he's he's not looking great, honestly. Uh, getting. Backed into a corner, knocked on his ass, and stabbed repeatedly. He's not in a good place physically or mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Because, uh, I don't... I don't love whatever those other two are doing back there. Uh, I don't think I've... I don't think I have realized that that is... Brindle. It's another accomplice. It's just another, it's just another guy. Uh, so I'm going to take my, uh, let me see. I think if I double move, I won't be able to do anything, but I will be able to get into that room. Correct? Sounds right to me. 20, and that's 30. I'll get you uh, basically up to here if you want it. Yeah, but I get, so. slide into the room. Yeah, you, you come around the corner just in... Which show can go? Oh, there you are. Uh, you come around yeah. the corner just in time to see this uh, other accomplice drive a knife into the play doctor in some sort of double cross, and the play doctor just screaming, I'm gonna cut your fucking eyes out. Uh, okay, um, and whose casket is that that he's fucking with? Who's that labeled? Uh, that looks like a older, like, grandfather. Okay. Um, really I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I double move, that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, but next time. Actually, let me just double check to make sure I don't have a bonus action. I don't think I do. Oh, actually, uh, I do have bonus action healing light. I can stop my own bleeding real quick. Can't hurt. Yeah, let me let me do that because otherwise I might be in trouble if I get hit again with one of those. All right. Okay. A little more, a little help back, and that's what I will do for this this round okay i've got eyes i've got eyes on them uh b riv bolo and Oddvar, and rainier all see this uh the 
been on the ground at this point is just like rolling around and like trying not to get stabbed and doing a eh, okay job at it. Uh, and he manages to, in this like ridiculous melee, uh, pull something out of off of his belt and just shatter uh, a vial on the ground. And this whole area goes dark. Hi, where are you going? <laughs> Back here. Um, B, I think you recognize this pretty quickly as obscuring mist. Just clouds the entire area. And he's going to take another action, and Minir is going to blindly attack. I don't need miss. So then I'm second attack. Uh, so you hear like just a clatter of sword on like stone, and just like you hear the scraping of that metal across the architecture. Uh, and Rainier just yell, "Fight like a coward! Show yourself!" And nothing from the other dude. Uh, Silas is going to move up a little bit. And he's going to cast... <laughs> this spells a good fit to light. <laughs> Real bad. Requires a lot of sight. Causes a shitload of collateral damage. Oh, I know he's going to cast. That'd be helpful. Uh, he's going to. He walks up, pulls out his spell book, and then proceeds to uh, take a. He actually moves over to the side of the mausoleum and pulls a bit of like the dust and spider webbing that's started to accumulate, and then throws it into the fog cloud uh, and just the whole area just erupts in like this weird like almost rapidly expanding tree branch noise uh, as B recognizing casts the web spell uh, into the cloud. It's like, <laughs> I got him! Maybe! <laughs> and they're gonna roll. Okay. Okay. And the burbs are going to attack. Oh, one of them hits. Hell yeah. Two of them hit at disadvantage. Wow. Go birds. You, you just hear <laughs> and like you can just see like feathers coming out of the uh fog cloud uh as they actually peck at him and deal <laughs> a little bit of damage. Wow. Okay. Good job, Riv. I I had thoughts the uh the fog cloud has disrupted some of them, but that that is okay. Um I really don't want to get shot again or stabbed or anything else. So I think instead uh, they are going to cast message to Lavinia okay. to ask her what is happening. Good, good question. They're turning on each other. Yeah. Ping! Message notification. 
I was gonna say, does that is message one that where I can respond or is it I can yeah. only receive? Okay, you can respond. Yep. You yeah, can when respond. when you do that, uh, Lavinia's response is just they're they've turned on each other. They're fighting each other now. Good. Let them kill each other. But we're still stuck in here with them. You can help. What do you think I've been fucking doing? Yeah. Anything else for Rip? If if it would be allowed, they would just follow up with Lavinia and ask, "What is up there?" Yeah. Uh, I she just relays that it just seems to be just an older, an older tomb. They're going to take in that information, and then, you know, I think they would like to hide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Bonus action. That's what they're going to do for now. They're Good just uh, they're just trying to figure out exactly what's going on and where they can be the most helpful and where they can uh, impress Rainier the most. Mm. All right, roll still. That was a 19 on the dice, so that is going to be a decently high roll, I believe. That is going to be a 24. Cool, I'm going to move you as you kind of like hide off to the side, 24. Okay. Sounds good. Avar is going to maintain concentration on the less, and... Uh, Not cleared to use any of those yet. No. I was gonna actually just ask Lavinia, what do you want me to do? Attack or defend? I'll switch over to Darkest Magic music. Yeah, that's on that's on brand actually. Hey, let's let's kick it up a notch. Well, I'm under the impression that there are three enemies in here, one of which uh, really fucked up my jazz. Uh, so I would recommend attacking. <laughs> I would recommend uh, a defensive assault, especially because I don't know how many more are in the hole in the ground. I'm assuming more since this random third person who I don't know is Brindle <laughs> showed up. So I would recommend Lavinia is just like she's like she doesn't understand why people are asking her these questions. She's like just attack them. Kick him. Justice shall be served. Cold. God for no. <laughs> just charges into the fog cloud. <laughs> Um, and it's going to attack. Oh shit, actually hits. <laughs> That's my little boy. Yeah, it hits. Damn, even a disadvantage. Yes. Alright. Uh, and you hear the dude scream as he's just gored by uh, Adbar's little tusks. And... Yells out to the other one. Hey, it's not looking good. We we might we gotta get out of here. <laughs> All right, Volo is going to uh, cast enhance ability on. B, you are, of course, a patron of the arcane arts, and I believe thoroughly that, uh, well, 
the mental capacity of one in a situation like this, dynamic, dangerous, but ripe with opportunity for glory. It's key. The mind is the most powerful weapon. I want you to use yours to great effect. It's going to give you advantage on anything intelligence related. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Intelligence related. Definitely what I was about to do. Um, You're a wizard. I'm a wizard. I'm a wizard. Um, I am a wizard, but I am also a strange badger person. Okie dokie. So, what I'm gonna do is cast speak with small beasts and see if I can send a swarm of cockroaches and other grave insects <laughs> down into that pit. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> I, let me pull up the stats for a cockroach swarm. Hold on. <laughs> I just uh just a swarm of tiny biting insects. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me an animal handling check. Cool. All right. Uh oh. Can I use the the D eight on this? Yes. Okay. If need be. Okay, so that's a 14, 15, 16. Should I use the D8? 16? Yeah. What do you say? Ooh, I'm being pretty weird, and it's not like if we... I feel like a D8 gives me a pretty good opportunity of going above 20, so I'm with a... What was that? Was that, a, that was a 16? 16. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. Um. Ah, eighteen. Eighteen. Um. Yep. To. Uh. Just get a get a bunch of just. Any like little critters that are running around in here, small vermin, uh, to go, uh, to sort of come out of their crevices and um, go down into this, to okay. to to that crevice. You see a swarm of mice and spiders and other like little tiny insects just kind of poke their heads out from different corners and then like congeal into this Katamari ball of terror uh, <laughs> and just be like ah yes the deeper darker depth <laughs> and like almost like whirlwind the toilet flush their way down this uh, <laughs> this little hole that's been dug I'm so glad I'm going to take cool down here we like this it's good. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad they like this. <laughs> uh what I'd be much more glad is that if I had taken dispel magic. But you know who didn't do that? It was me. Okay, it's fifth level. It's yeah, yeah. So uh Plague Doctor is looking at this and going. Looks at Brindle, the imposter. Looks at Lavinia. And uh, Brindle, you can roll it inside. Oh. Pretty insightful. Um, 22. Okay, he's very clearly weighing his options. Uh, also, on an incident, I'll give you last time you fought these guys, there were six of them. Um, there's only two now. They seem to have a lot more That's stuff, but there's only two. Yeah. And so you think he's like, 
weighing his options of whether to cut and run. And like again, something seems like maybe it's worth staying here and taking you all on, even though the odds are real bad right now. Sounds like he's a, uh, he seems to be between a, a rock and a hard place. Mm. Perhaps something has driven him to these, uh, these ends of losing most of his team and going all out and still considering to keep going and not just cutting and running. Hmm. Mm. 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 Um, he's going to turn around and. Oh, that's from one of the resources that he has. Whatever he does, I think Brindle will say, are you sure you want to? <laughs> <laughs> you say that out loud, right? Oh, yeah. So I think at that moment, Lavinia is just like, wait a fucking minute. Is fucking Brindle? <laughs> I know that voice. Uh, he actually pauses and you see he reaches simultaneously in the thought process for a small uh, scroll pouch on his belt. And a small, like, orange vial. And then he lets the intrusive thoughts win and win and grabs the orange vial and just chucks it at you. Uh, and your AC is 14. Yeah. Can I catch it? I mean, I'm right there next to him. If you were a monk, I'd say yes. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> Uh, you take Ooh. 10 points of fire damage as this flask of Al the alchemist's fire just erupts on you. Uh, please Does make a he... oh, oh, sorry. It's gonna make say, a dexterity hope... saving throw. This is DC. I hope he takes some uh damage too. I'm right next to him, five foot area. Uh, dex saving throw versus uh, DC 14. Oh no. Okay. Uh that would be an eight. Cool. You catch on fire. Huh. Yes. So Lavinia, For you 10 just points. see <laughs> ten points of fire damage. Uh and then you are still on fire, so you'll take more damage next round. Um as this like napalmy <laughs> alchemist fire connects with Brindle and just lights him on fire. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. Uh, and he just uh, yells. Hurry up and get the stuff. We gotta go. Uh, as action 20, 40. I feel like maybe I shouldn't have pushed him. Gonna disengage and run. Can you disengage past both of you? Yeah. That's like, can he do two people? You can. Disengage it prevents all attacks uh, of opportunity. Uh, and basically, just illusion runs past uh, the fire and Lavinia. Um, to try to get down to help out with whatever's happening here, because that distraction in the north did not work. <laughs> Brindle, you're on fire. Um, go ahead and this is another five points of fire damage, and make another dexterity saving throw, please. I can't hear you anymore. Okay, I said, okay. here's the thing. Brindle, Brindle only has five more points of hit points. <laughs> oh, okay. my God. Um, uh, so I'll give you this one because it's it's simultaneous damage then save. So uh, like you take the fire damage and like very and like manage to put yourself out as like the cumulative damage from that actual fire takes place and you fall over and start to lose consciousness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but you do not have to make a death saving throw this turn, which is good. Lavinia. Okay. Brindle just lit on a fire, managed to like haphazardly stop, drop, and roll, and then just stop moving. Okay, cool. Uh, this man is still within 120 feet of me, correct? Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, I am going to use, I'm going to cast a uh, guiding bolt. Uh, I'm going to probably end up using the Bardic Inspiration to make sure it hits, but first, let's see. Oh, get absolutely fucked. That's going to probably hit soon. Does 22 hit? 22 definitely hits. Okay. Um, so he's going to get hit 
He's going to take 4d6 of radiant damage. Sixteen points of radiant damage, and uh, whoever happens to hit him next is gonna get advantage because he's glittering. Roll it. Yeah. Roll a d twenty, please. You're looking for a six or higher. Six or higher. Mm -hmm. uh, let me actually let me use a different die real quick. Let me use this one. Nineteen. Nineteen. I'm sorry, six or lower. You're looking for six or lower. My apologies. Now, one of the illusions pops out of existence. Does the advantage still carry to the next person, even it's if it's an illusion? Good. No. Uh, okay. But it just hits it, lights him up, and it disappears. Okay. Uh, bonus action. I guess I'm gonna... <laughs> I guess I'm gonna... He'll he'll brindle for a d6. Okay. Since yeah. I'm standing right here. Well, Brindle's not happy. Oh, that's that. six points. Okay. That's max. There Ooh. you go. Here's a bonus Brind action. Brindle, everything starts to go dark, and then like suddenly you feel a surge of adrenaline and life come back into you. Whoa. Have some healing light. <laughs> You're not dead. Brindle takes a deep breath uh, and is up on his hands and knees and just <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna call it at the end of this round, by the way. Um, okay. The I think Doctor Friend's gonna do something else that you all can't see. But you'll probably hear. Yeah. Uh, B. Silas, Riv, Volo, Renair, Oddvar all hear the distinctive sound of uh, metal being pried. Mm. Uh, and you just hear from inside the fog cloud like I see a few more seconds <laughs> right, I'm just going to swing again I'll do this in the chat disadvantage oh. 8 plus 6 is 14 that will hit uh and as you hear, like, I need a few more seconds, you also hear a very solid thunk thud. And Rainier just says, Spellcraft doesn't beat skill. As he feels pretty confident that he took somebody down. Uh, Silas is going to run over to B and go. Holy cow! What? Uh, what? What? Um, how do I? Ha how can I help? I was not prepared for this. I can. I, I can identify things. I. I can. Uh, I. I can. I can. I can use detect magic on. I am. I am like. Are you okay? I'm. I'm. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Right? I'm okay. You're okay. You're okay. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you're okay. Do you have any? Do you have any uh, offen offensive magic other than that thing we did with the ravens was sick? I want to know more about that. But I like ravens. <laughs> very good. Uh, uh, you see those? Uh, you see that man and his um many selves? Uh -huh. His uh his uh um uh I can't remember the name of the spell that makes illusory use. Um, <laughs> do you have any magic that can? Do them harm. I've been working on one thing, but I don't. Uh, I haven't. I haven't really tested it yet. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. And he like picks up a rock, um, <laughs> and is like, "Here we go!" And fires it across the room. Um, Okay, Silas is getting Silas, hot. Silas, Silas did you just make okay. a real gun? <laughs> uh, no I mean, I was trying to make like a, you know, mobile handheld kind of trebuchet effect. Uh, I think it, I thought it was neat. Uh, I was actually looking to do the reverse 
to kind of extend the duration of a of like a mage hand to like actually get stuff for me like from the top shelves of those library uh shelves without having to like go up and down the ladders because like those can get a, you know, a little rickety uh can someone roll me a d20 and you want an eight or lower now uh, do you want oh go go for it go for it <laughs> So one, which okay, that, is, is a good thing good. for the that's first time good. in that forever. Hits. All right, can somebody Just beat him with a rock? Uh, Della, please roll me. That's a lot of damage. Three d eight. Silas, kill this man. <laughs> it might. This could potentially kill him. <laughs> The catapult spell is a fucking ridiculous spell. What uh, in the David and the Goliath good, bullshit Lord. is that? That's 12 damage. I didn't roll great that time, but still. These two illusions go away as the plague doctor is just wham hit with this piece of like rock and just falls down unconscious. Oh my god, you Oh need man, to go spell. Silas. <laughs> so that like is... I was just trying to get Oh, did I get him? <laughs> you got him. <laughs> oh, is he okay? <laughs> probably not. No, he's probably gonna need medical attention. Give me two seconds. B's gonna hustle over, like sk skirts hiked up, and she's gonna pull that plague mask right off his face. Right off of his face. Uh, except I think Stand Riv, by is, ribs. Riv is closer. So Riv, you want the? That's what B's hustling over to do. But Riv, if you want to do that, since this man jumped your fiance, I'm sorry, not fiance, boyfriend. Getting a little ahead of yourself. We just escalated that so quickly. Um, no, I, I think that is exactly what Riv is going to do. Uh, walk over and take that mask off. Okay. Uh, you walk over, you rip the mask off. One massive head wound. Uh, <laughs> right, and it's just like just, and it looks like a, it's a mess. Uh, between that and all the psychic damage, this dude's out cold. Uh, and you're not a doctor, but we'll probably die very shortly. Uh, without some sort of like medical or healing, uh, but two is a Kenku. As suspected, mm -hmm. the uh, play doctor mask hides the Kenku beak quite well. Very fun. Uh, do I? I'm going to try to do a. Oh shit! Why would medicine be wisdom and not intelligence? That's dumb. Wait, tie uh, him up first. No, I was just going to get him stabilized. I'm not going to cast a spell. I was going to okay. stabilize so he's not making death saves. Lavinia, uh, you hear from the fall cloud as I'm ending the initiative, and I'm going to break combat after this. Uh, Oddbar say, our adversary is down. Would you like me to finish him? <sighs> Lavinia is like standing there. She's still bleeding. She's looking at the burned body of... Brindle, and all she's just gonna say is she's just gonna say, do what you think is just. Oh man, <laughs> what a oh boy, woo! Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Uh, because <laughs> this is exactly uh, let's see, lawful good. No. Uh, you hear to... another just like boom, and then the fog cloud starts to dissipate um, as Advar has just like put one tiny little hoof on this dude's face and, a boom, and just bonked him back into the uh, <laughs> casket one more time. <laughs> it's like he is detained. Okay. I'm going to break combat there. What do you do? Because we're kind of wrapping up. Well. Well. Uh, so I do have uh I will say Lavinia does have as part of my gear because of my job, I do have uh, manacles. And I think 
from where I'm standing, because I'm still like looking at Brindle on the ground, I will just toss down towards where you two are standing the pair for the uh, Plague Doctor, and I'm just going to say. Well, I'm sure Rainier's going to want to know what they wanted. Riv is uh, going to call back to Lavinia. Pinky, I wouldn't have expected this of you. Brindle's dying. I don't want to hear it from you right now. Uh, I will uh, hustle be like oh my god i so i'm gonna i'll hustle up and try to uh uh do a healing at do like a try to stabilize brindle okay Br- brindle, brindle oh, is no, you're up. standing now at least like like yeah like brush himself off like oh Lavinia, i didn't know you could do that <laughs> doesn't sound like he's dying yeah he he's, i mean he still looks I mean, he's so rough. I've got like he's six, not about I gave you, six hit points. Yeah. I was gonna say if you went down under your like at six and you've got like skin missing, I can't fix that. I'm not that good, bud. Oh yeah, I might I might have to still be looked after as far as that goes, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure how that uh I'm not sure how that works mechanically. I do I do have a greater healing spell, but I well, also, and Brindle's uh, not looking good. And that's mostly yeah. adrenaline then where he's like, Woo! Yeah, like medically you're alive, but like physically you're like, I need a fucking week on the couch to just recover from what just happened to me. Um, yeah. Well, I am not feeling good. Also, I just got burned a lot. Uh, burned, yeah. You were on fire. You had napalm on you. Yes. You still have napalm on you, probably. It is out. Well, I, I did put it out, but like... Yeah, yeah, that but was, that you was still not got fun. The goo. Uh, nope. we I did not expect scrape the goo somebody off, yeah. to point blank throw napalm at me. Very, very uncool of the plague doctor. Speaking of the plague doctor, what what happened to him? Where did he go? Oh, he's what here. happened? Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna direct you down the hall to where he is unconscious from where he was beamed with the rock. Yeah, you basically have these two uh, just KO'd. Um, oh my god, B B, do you have anything to to help me out with the? burns um yeah let me see what i can do um i don't have anything specifically to help with burns but i can i can use i can just use regular old a medicine check to try to you know help or manage pain and the tower also has a good good uh number of healing salves and such so does the uh temple of fear i mean can i say that that's something that i like like snagged knowing i was doing this from the from the university just like let me just like snag one of these healing potions how much is that right i've got a stipend it'll be fine right yeah you managed to patch up brindle as well as he's gonna get like he's there's no secondary yeah i I, i'm gonna have to go uh He's, I'm gonna say uh, Brindle will uh, have also kind of made his way like, once we once we do that make make the way down to where the plague doctor and uh, his friend are making the oh way down. Oh my gosh! Town. You guys, you guys, what, what did you do to him? <laughs> like uh, rock hit his head, and like the other guy, like uh, yeah, uh, Rainier just went to town on him. So. Well, we are oh, apparently uh, the the. Uh, traumatic brain injury uh, 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 twins here. Uh, uh, I I destroyed his brain with psychic energy, and uh, he hit him with a big rock, moving way faster than rocks normally move. That was wow. six, actually. Uh, was high for his legs? I didn't. Actually high five, Silas. Uh, you. <laughs> Feels kind of bad. Uh, I mean, these were really bad people. They they were hurting us. I, 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 I guess I just um... he fully set Brindle on fire. Yeah, I guy yeah. that, that guy just nearly killed me. If it wasn't for Lavinia, I would just I would be a, a crisp back there. So thank you, Silas. <laughs> he also I, stabbed me. So like, good job. I mean, this helped my research. He shot too, so too. I guess it's a win. Um, right there is going to do like kind of move over towards Rib and, like, help Rib up and be like, are you, are you okay? I'm fine. Are 
to you. All right. I'm gonna couple potions and a good night's sleep can't fix. Uh, you see, he's got like a couple of nicks and cuts, but uh, seems generally okay. Are you all right overall, given that they broke in here? Oh, not even in the slightest. I'm going to find who did this, and I'm going to make them pay for disturbing my family. I mean, to have the audacity, and then, like, as you all are looking around, like, you realize that, like, this casket is open. At some point, that other dude must have managed to pry it open. Um, and inside... Is she in there? Two things. One, there are no remains. <gasps> and two, sitting centered inside this casket is a small glowing yellow orb. I mean, I know we're wrapping up and all, but I think this is where Brenda will give Pride Tech the opportunity to to probably let people know about the impent like the, the 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 persistent requests of the stone as, to... as soon as you see that you hear that voice again saying courier make me whole uh uh oh yeah i take uh brindle takes a, a step back just steps away from away from the uh from the casket um and uh and then tries to just like I don't. He takes the bag out that he has the uh, that he has a stone, and he's just kind of holding it away from him. Um, uh, so um, the so the stone the stone um, that we stole uh, it. Oh, I mean, what Silas like looks at you? The stone that I stole from outside. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I like I know we're not supposed to take anything from the grounds here. Uh, but like there was a really cool looking stone uh, you have outside, a rock and I well? I do. Uh, and it's a really good one. Um, and I'll show it to you I'm, later. But I'd but uh, if you'd like to come over, I'll show you my rock collection. I think there's. I would love to see your rock you collection, like Silas. I it's great. <laughs> uh, um, I. <laughs> love amethyst so much um but uh, shape, but, but right? anyway uh <laughs> we'll, I, we'll talk later we'll talk later <laughs> yeah yeah we'll, we'll talk later very important very important rock buddies uh yeah um actually Silas, would would you be able to see if there are any more of them just i got it like right outside it was really cool i don't know if it's some weird kind of Quartz or no, okay, maybe not right now. Hold on a second, it's dangerous out there. <laughs> I uh, uh, well, we saw we saw a guard actually get taken down by by something moving really fast outside. That's why I, I, I got you Wait, inside what? earlier. Uh, oh my yeah, god, yeah, sorry, I, we didn't have a chance to talk about this really at all, did we? Uh, yeah, there was a guard outside, it got taken down by something moving super fast. Um, and that that's yeah, I grabbed I grabbed Silas on the way in. Um, the uh so okay okay <laughs> I... I was unsure what to do now. <laughs> uh but it's staying well away from that casket um you is there a, 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 brindle comes over to, to, to be is there anything that silas could go be doing right now it's it's not just silas brindle and Brindle, yeah. <laughs> I think you need to go lay down. You yeah, have been through so. a lot tonight. You're right. I am really tired. I am hurting. This I... has been awful. <laughs> the voice just sits down on the floor, just like... Yeah. You hear the, the voice again say, Courier, if you help to make me whole, I can make you whole. Is he still like holding the bag out away from him? It's like, ah, what the fuck? Uh, Lavinia will just like reach down to try to like take the bag. Since you seem to be like holding it away from you, will you let me take the bag or are you gonna oh, bite man. me? Um, 
is there any kind of like a will saving throw or anything? Do I have to do that? How how under this thing's like influence am I, or is it just I'm just its ordained courier? But that that's up to me to interpret. Okay, you, you so can really give it away. I'm okay with that actually. Uh, Brindle is 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 okay with like letting go of the uh, letting go of the bag for the moment. Um, yeah, Levin, this is gonna... way more com complex than than your your typical thing that I could just sell on the street for a profit. I mean, this isn't uh this there's something more going on here, and it is not great. So yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna take the bag from him. I'm not gonna open it or look in it or anything. I'm just gonna take it and just like kind of put it over my shoulder and just like watch you. You hear a minute. Yeah. Lavinia, you yeah. hear a voice in your head as soon as you take the bag. Um, it just says, "Oh, a new courier." Interesting. Ah, oh, you're broken like me. <laughs> Lavinia just goes out loud. Lavinia just goes, hmm. <laughs> looks at, <laughs> looks at Our journey friend. together will make us both whole. She's just like, hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I need to do an insight check to, to understand that look. <laughs> she, oh, it's just <laughs> like, yeah, I'm talking to her shit. <laughs> She's just staring directly at Brindle, just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Courier, what you seek is actually right beneath you. Please return my eye to me, and together we can take the journey down below. Rainier, what's buried under here? Uh, I mean, my family to an extent, but that there shouldn't be. There are, I mean, there are rumors that could cause that. There are areas that could connect to the Undercity, but uh, it's it's not exactly like we have a map template. Uh, there's just different areas that. Across the city. I mean, the Yanni portal is one of them. Could be one here. I mean, we've never really dug that deep. Didn't need to. I'm going to uh, go over to that hole real quick, uh, chatter down it, and see if any of my little critters can report back and tell me how deep, how far back it goes. Oh, it's like super deep, and there's some cool like lights down here. We like it. Oh yeah, there's like cool lights down there. Uh huh. Like Usually lights are scary to us, but this time these lights are actually really nice. Lights that you like are they like fungus? Are they like elect like lights that people use? Lights that humans and other large bipedal critters use? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Not like the weird ones that are like super, super hot. These are, these are nice. Nice lights. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you. You want to come down? We can help you out. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'd B B will sort of pick up a spy, like like sort of like pick up one of the spiders and be like, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go follow my vermin swarm. Um, and, uh, see how far this goes. Vela just says, I'm going to stay here and make sure that these absolute <laughs> ne'er-do-wells are detained. After all, they're going to have to tell their version of the story to the authorities, but we have the official one. So I'll take care of that. Right here, my good man. Please give me a hand. I'm sure you're Boundless desire to see justice served here will be very useful in this situation. And he and Rainier kind of like move them over together and like put manacles on them. Gesture to be. <laughs> you we need to, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. You you probably don't want to go down there yet. Is is Silas out of earshot or Silas? 
Faust is just kind of like wandering around. And what he would actually do is go over because he's not necessarily medically trained, but he's like looking at the guy like, I got a bandage. <laughs> just admiring his bird's <laughs> work. <laughs> like, trying to trying to like bandage this guy's head. It's like, I don't, this is probably not going to help. <laughs> The stone, the stone, the stone from the museum. Oh, it's fine. Message. <laughs> we can talk like oh, this. Yeah. What there we go. You? Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> the, the, the stone from the museum. It uh really wants whatever is down there and it's communicating with me. And now it's communicating, I'm pretty sure, with Lavinia. And it's trying to get us to do stuff for it. And I think it really wants what's in that casket over there. That might be one of the stones it goes with it. I'm not sure. And there's something else below here. I don't know. We need we need those stones anyway. Lavinia just like do to do the other thing. Okay, this is all through message. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We okay, need the stones okay. anyway to do, right. to do the other thing. Like so. Okay, but we're just gonna be worried. Should we be bringing the stone down there with us? Should we? I guess we could. I guess we could just do it. It's in a bag of holding right now, by the way. It's not even supposed <laughs> to be here right now. I don't. <laughs> well, if the three of you are going down there, I would like to stay and hear whatever these fine people have to say. And so I would be happy to hold on to the stone. If you would like also uh, be like, reaches into the the sort of the vermin and sort of pulls out a little a little thing um this is a black widow spider um so you know uh if uh uh i could tell him to bite them if you give it the nod so you know, I, the, that is a great idea the one thing i'm concerned about was splitting guy? the splitting the group up though is is that these guys just came from down there. There could be a lot more of them. Hey, like are there any more of to... them? Are there any other people down there? B asks the vermin swarm. Uh, the people? No. No, no people. Dead things. Hmm? Ambulator. Okay. Dead things that can walk around? No. Okay. Mostly just bodies in catacomb, bodies lying around type thing. Mm. Okay. A lot okay. of snacks. Excellent. Excellent. Good eating on a corpse when you're a bug. Uh, like a buffet. A bug fay. We don't make puns. Our intelligence isn't that high. That's fair. Uh, yeah. B will, after chittering, uh, uh, disturbingly uh sort of turn back and say they're not finding anybody else down there just dead bodies all right then i'd say that sounds like a pretty good plan then i mean as as you also saw i'm not exactly good in a fight so you didn't even try riv and i am still actively bleeding so <laughs> it's just it's so is up. riv <laughs> everyone but b took damage Yep. That's I'm a wizard. I'm not supposed to take damage. Max. <laughs> if you're letting your wizard take damage, bad stuff has happened. Or there's another wizard. <laughs> two wizards. There were two wizards. There were two there's... wizards, but there weren't two wizards. They were both on the same side. You could uh, duel Silas. I would like to see that. I could duel Silas. <laughs> I could duel Silas. I'm gonna have to I'm Silas have just, to... Yeah, Silas Silas just my, did some Silas uh... might wreck your shit. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Saying, man. Bro, si I, don't, I don't know. Silas is, Silas is familiar as a raven and he can make multiple of them. That alone is a danger to your little gnomey self. So he's got shit like tensor splitting disc, identify, like detect magic. This dude is not prepared for a fight. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but he can throw a rock. He can throw uh, a rock. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I don't have. I have. Mind Spike is my only <laughs> offensive spell. It's the only one I've got. Uh, okay. Well, we're we're here already. We might as well go check it because I I would love to get some rest, but uh, we should. We're never going to make it back in here without another pass. So, like, that's, yeah, let's go. I mean, that's not true necessarily. Rainier is has a family plot here. He can obviously get in here after dark. That's uh, true, and we do have a, Lavinia, an that, in with Rainier. That 
nostalgia sensation, now the adrenaline's gone, is still there, still below you. And that same that same sort of divine energy also below us. Not that stone, not coming from the stone in the casket, but coming from. Okay. Um, do I feel anything anymore about that now that I'm not holding the stone? Or oh. yeah, that's nice. Neat. It's gone. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go down below because I'm not, you know, um intimidating uh the way uh you are, Riv. Um I think I think probably two of us should stay up here. I think um I think Lavinia, as much as I would love to have your combat prowess down there to keep my stupid ass safe, I think it's probably better that you be up here to hear any kind of confessions they have so this has some kind of legal backing to whatever we're doing. You're giving me a look like you hate this, but you see you understand that I'm making sense. I hope. B, there is something outside that we might have to fight in order to leave here. There might be something down there that you might have to fight. Yes. There are people in here who could still potentially slip their bonds, and we would still have to fight them. Yes. None Do you of think thinning us out in this dark, haunted place is safe? No. Advar wanders over and is like, ah, if it's written reinforcements you need, I am still very much fresh and ready for more. I'm, I'm not, I, all of those things will continue to be true. Our other option is that we can just sit here and wait. We can sit here, wait, we can all listen to them. Potentially we can wait till they wake up. I might have the opportunity to gain back some of my spells, but the longer we wait, the more things are going to start to go weird down there. How long is our pass for? Tonight. Just tonight. So, like, I don't know. It, it, it's I, I don't know if we can wait for them to recover necessarily. Do we have time for that? If we're going to do that tonight, I would say either we take them and leave here and bring them somewhere and then try to come back, which is not assured. Well, that's or like, just try to go down there now and not worry too much about them trying to escape like, like the, other the majority too. of us going down there if uh, there's a dangerous thing outside this could be another exit that's kind of what i was thinking if this is a connection to the undercity we can we can get ourselves out to the yawning portal wait there's an on a whole nother city here <laughs> oh oh brindle <laughs> Oh, Brindle. Oh, um, Brindle. <laughs> I mean, that sounds great. I want to go down there. Uh, I'm hearing yes I from mean, Brindle. You know. I'm hearing yes yeah. from B. I can, I can, again, again, what I want to do is go down, scout, come back. I'm not thinking that I'm going to go, we're going to go all the way out. I just think that we don't all need to be up here to hear these guys talk. They're still very unconscious. So. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we might be overthinking a little, little too much. They're, they're not going to be in a condition to run away. Like, I think we should all go down, but, you know, that's just me. I'm, I'm not concerned about them running away as much as I am about what happens when they are in the hands of law enforcement. I would like to hear what they say before that happens. Volo just turns back to you and says, 
When the ref's guidance is awake, and we can certainly give you a call. Be the first to know. But he like kind of gr grabs one by the hair and is like, they are very in very bad shape, and just lets go and that hooks <laughs> back. That doesn't. I mean, we're not even sure if one of them's going to talk anymore anyway. <laughs> That, that I hit the head really hard. Count for the concern with bringing the stone down there. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Courier, I have no interest in what lies below. That is your desire, not mine. It doesn't care about what's down there. It just can. It just knows what it is. Apparently. It just cares about, and she like jer jerks her head towards the, the casket again. Okay. 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 We are a team, you and I. I wish for my eye to be returned to me, and I wish for you to have things you desire as well. Lavinia's just gonna take the bag and just rattle it real hard, real quick. What you desire is well, if you choose to walk away from that. Well. I've done my part. I am I I I'm a fucking wizard, guys, and there's a big magic thing underneath me. I, I this is about as long as I can resist that. That's just this is like baked in to the magic genetic thing. Um we will get I was going to say, po po hole. point of order, we could always decide this at the beginning of next session, because it's starting There's to get that. pretty late. Yeah. yeah. This, it sounds like you're all uh -huh. in. Um, okay. The reason I, this is just going to help me for like mapping what happens next. So Got it. it sounds like after you have some discussion, the four of you decide, okay, we're going to go down there. Volo, Silas, and Rainier are going to take care of the plague doctors. You know, they're all more than capable of individuals. Um, and the four of you, five of you, if you take odd bar, descend down into this tunnel. As you begin your descent, we zoom out uh, to an individual wearing these brightly colored wizard robes. And he's in a darkened outside area. And <laughs> next to him, just almost seemingly out of nowhere, appears a strange, almost emaciated, hunched over creature. And it says, Master, I think we have found what we're looking for. We have to act fast. There are others who are also interested. And the one that robe says, Very well. What a night to make a comeback. Lead on. And the two of them start moving swiftly through the terrain. And we'll call it there for tonight. Went a little long, but I think we're in a good spot. So mm. thank you for everyone that hung out. That's exciting. <laughs> we're in a dangerous pit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh I want to put all the links in the chat. And then uh, if you all are good for it, I'm going to skip our usual outro because we've gone long. And uh, I love you all. But I'm going to set up a raid. So if anybody has any parting thoughts, um, feel free to share them now. I'll, the channel is going to raid. It may have just ended. Hold on. When we put the, when we put the stone in the baguette, uh, when we put the eye stone in the baguette stone, which spot should we take? Should we take the lowest, the highest, or should we just put it in the middle? Well, this okay. is the yellow one, so it should go in the middle, and red goes on top, and the, when we find the green one, it goes on the bottom. 
<laughs> but the stone itself is green, so will it have a secondary green stone? Well, it must because God, I'd forgotten what the stone looked like until it's you said baguette. all of this. It's oh, a baguette. It does, yeah, baguette. Yeah. Yeah. My it's, life. A, it's a horror it's baguette. baguette, is what it is. <laughs> it is yeah. the horror so baguette. Mm -hmm. uh, a sickly green I... baguette. <laughs> As just I as, think we'll have as, to wait to collect them all, and then we can insert them all at once, and in whatever order makes sense. <laughs> we just taught it. We put it. We put this. We put the stone in the bag with it, but we don't connect them, so they're just rattling around in there. It's a bag of holding. I mean, maybe they'll never touch. <laughs> Stop it! Um, Stop it! I think we're back in two weeks. That's my. I'm gonna take a look at my little. Calendar. I think so. That is what I had, but I wasn't sure about your schedule. Uh no, I'm I'm saying that one is we're in September, right? Yeah, that was good. We're good for the twelfth. Let's lock and load on that one. So all right. see you we'll all be back in on the twelfth two weeks. Thank you all for hanging out. You're gonna see the thanks for watching the screen with some music, and then we're gonna raid Enchanting Sorcery. Uh who I think are what are they playing? Dragon Age. So uh Very enjoy cool. that. enjoy that. Thank you for hanging out with Thank us. Thank you. And have a fantastic night. Good night, friends. Bye, everybody.